Park niggas know me. Curb on, little homie. All days, all days. Yeah. Been a road, been a road. My man Malone, Curtis what's Malone. Up, man? What's up, man? DC How you doing, Salt, man? man. How you Wait doing, to get man? you on here, man. God, I was real excited about getting you, man. You're DC legend, man. You stay under the radar. You don't make a lot of noise, man. You don't come on joints like this, man. I want to dap you again, man. Thank you for coming through, Sammy, man. man I appreciate Changing you for having yours, me, man. brother. Yeah, for man. sure, so man. We're yeah. going to just get straight to the to the cut, man. Okay. Like, man, where you from, man? Tell us where you from. A little bit about your uh, childhood. Well, you know, originally from Uptown, you okay. know, we moved out Maryland, man, out to Palmer Park, Maryland. So, grew up pretty much out Landover, out in that area, man, and, you know, uh, was a half-decent basketball player, man, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mother and father, little middle-class home, you know, mm -hmm. uh, three sisters, mm -hmm. a few other sisters and brothers also, you know, from other, from another uh, lady. But for the most part, man, just came up out Landover, man. Right, right. And, and, and Lando, you like Palmer Park specifically, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Got, that's that's almost like this. Shit. That's like a that's like a Ward Nine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was, it's can, different. Yeah, it was yeah, a little yeah, different, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. got the uh, 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 historical boxing gym, Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, yes. it's Palmer Park back then, right? It's oh, Palmer Park, but it's you know it's the Sugar Ray Leonard Gymnasium. gymnasium right, they right. named the gym after him once he right, made it. Right, you know, right, but at right. first everything started. At the rec center. All right. And y'all had a lot of good fights. I know I know you had Sugar Ray Leonard, you had Jamal Hinton. Uh anybody else you can think of? I know Dirk Holmes. Uh well we had uh well Jamal, like right. you said, we Andrew Maynard. Right. Um What's the uh, last game? Son in a fighting too. He Sonny fought. Speed, Eugene yeah. Speed. Yeah, what's the, what's the last game? fun? It's Rivers. All the Rivers All brothers. The Rivers they had a bunch there. of those, yeah. Right. Little Kevin Rivers it was the baby, was uh Kevin Rivers. Who was a pretty good fighter back in his day. Right. We had a lot of, I thought, guys that had a chance, mm -hmm. but just didn't make it, man. You know right. how the streets was right. back then, man. Right. And the streets was first. Right. And Ray Leonard was the one who didn't let the streets get him. He yeah. took the advantage of it. Because uh, back then, they was big on Dirk Holmes. They thought he was going to be the yeah. one. He yeah. ended up catching like a robbery or something. Yeah. With a cat. You ever get you ever hit him? You ever get a chance yeah, to see him? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Captain Rivers uh, beat Dirk Holmes. They robbed him. <clears throat> but well, everybody still talk about that to he this day. Huh? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great fight. Okay, okay. God damn. So they they also say you played a little basketball, man. Uh, 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 high school, junior high. Yeah, play? I played. I played throughout high school, man. Uh, junior high too, from uptown mm. on the playgrounds to mm -hmm. you know went to Parkdale High School out out Maryland, out Riverdale, mm -hmm. and uh, from there went to a couple of school colleges. Played a little bit of college basketball, but mm -hmm. again. You know, I uh, turned left when yeah. I should have kept driving straight. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got distracted. Uh, yeah, you got distracted. Got there. Who, who, some dudes you play against, like notable guys you play against in high school? Uh, well, in our area, the, the players were like, uh, you know, Clint Venable, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Sumner, mm -hmm. Keith Williams, mm -hmm. uh, Crossland had a mob, Mike Tate, and them. Ooh, uh, that's a bucket. Uh, Henry Hall played with me at Parkdale. Right, right. Uh, so, I mean, but, you know, even playing against, you know, guys like we played Spengon, mm -hmm. we played Coolidge, Dirk Davis, and mm -hmm. them. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we came over, uh, Spengon came out there and beat us. We mm -hmm. played at Spengon one year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I got a chance to play against all those guys all the time. And, you know, we used to play at the Rex and over Columbia Park right, yeah, where you got to taste a little bit. taste of everybody right, yeah. that came through there, you know, from Earl Moore to right. Sherman to That's Smitty. Name. Earl name. Oh, Earl, yeah. Why? Earl, Earl was, don't uh, be mentioned, man. Well, it should be. A lot of people probably don't really know. But Earl name. was Earl was special, man. Right, yeah. That's a name, man. Earl talk a lot, man. I always tell him, I say, man, you, you like a solid sass. They don't bring your name. They ain't hip to you, man. Or oh, something, no, he man. was a really good player. I went to watch him out, even out with George Mason. Right, you right. Know, Earl was oh, yeah, Earl yeah. was a problem, yeah, man. Yeah, big fish yeah. in them out there. Yeah, what's the name? So, I, you say you play uh, uh, for my man Henry Hall, man. I got I to gotta put you on the spot because this is a big debate and everybody want to know, man, you know, Henry Hall or Kirk Smith, man. Uh, who you... Henry Hall and Kirk Smith, man. Well, you, you know, I, I mean, I, that's, that's a tough one. He showing up put me on the spot. But uh, I tell you what, man, I, I had a chance to play against both of them. Uh, but I think if I'm, I'm going to have to give this because I feel like if Henry Hall put in the work like Kirk, mm -hmm. you know, I think Kirk later on, just became better and better and better. Yeah, you know, yeah. Henry kind of stopped playing. Right, right, you didn't right. see much of Henry, but right. if Henry would have 
kept going, I would have to take Henry Hall, though. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. and it's right. official bone. It's official. I said it, the right. other bone. Yeah, okay. When okay, he okay. watched us. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. The knockoff bone, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I come from jail, they call him Kirk Bowl. Yeah, I said, yeah. start calling you Kirk Bowl, man. Yeah. You Kirk Smith, yeah. man. You yeah. spinny little brother, That's man. Right. Little Smith, right? That's right. Blue bone, bone, and herbal Talking about what he said, yeah, it's Kirk. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. That, that, but that'll be, man, that's a, that's two hell of a two hell of a dude, man. It was, man. I like I said, man, playing with Henry every day, you know, boom, man. I started coaching, uh, giving back and helping kids, man, mm -hmm. and played against some of the best players that you see now from mm -hmm. LeBron, and we done seen them all, mm -hmm. man. And I would ha I would put Henry up in that category with Kobe and them from a high school perspective. Damn, that's, that's how strong. good he was. Yeah, that's I strong. thought, I that's thought strong. he, you know, and like I said, I've seen them all, right. but I don't know if I've seen what I've seen every day in practice right. and in games, right. you know, on a high school level, right. what this boy was doing. Cause he was doing that Steph Curry shit back then. He was oh, pulling yeah. up from the, yeah. the locker room, he man. He step over half and pull it up. Yeah, right, that's crazy. So uh, you seen a lot of ball players, man. You coaching, playing, you seen them, so, who you who would you say the best person best talent you've seen that didn't make it to the college level and also the best talent you see that didn't make it to the pro level whether it been more than one or a couple or who you who would you off your head I know you might miss somebody but off of your off of your head mm. first college they didn't go to college it was high school well you know like I, I always I always to not make it mm -hmm. to me uh one of the, like I said, Henry Hall was mm -hmm. one. Okay. I really thought Henry was the next Tim Hardaway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, what Kurt did, I mean, he was undersized, but Kurt was a different animal who I didn't, who didn't make it, you right. know, and right. played for some money. But I thought Kurt was a guy that could have played in the league and should have made it, right. you know. But it's so many man that right. we didn't see right. here that that you know so. Most of the ones I seen that was really good. Most of them made it. They wore a uniform in right. the NBA, but for the most part, uh, you know, the guy. I think I think our guys here in the city, man, there was a lot of guys that could have made it. Man. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them streets, man. Them streets, man. They undefeated, man. It, yeah, it, it don't lose. They, they undefeated, yeah. man. Stacy yeah. Robinson, man. Yeah. Uh, 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 come one come to mind too, man. And um, and what about you? You uh. I'm gonna say it now. Probably you probably heard this in a while, man. Uh, Lafonte Johnson, Baltimore. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, um, um, Shorty, man, was the goods, man. And Shorty, yeah. and Shorty, one of the few. And I want to get your perspective on it, but he one of the few dudes I can think of. I always give a trivia, a trivia that I say who was the only player in the uh, D.C. Baltimore area that won the championship in high school, public, private, and prep. He won wow. three joints. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah. And you know. Yeah. Lafonte. You know. Tay played with us. Right. You know. Um, but you know, something about Baltimore, man. They was known to create these little special, the right, small right, special right, players. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. And when uh, Coach Goody, you know, brought him up here to us, right. man. Like I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. this little guy's the truth. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we had some pretty good players. But he came right up here, man, fit in, did his thing. But he was special, man. Right, yeah. Showed it was special. Yeah, Coach Keith Goody, man, he, look, he, he was my secret, one of my secret GMs outside of you. Mm -hmm. You, Coach Goody, uh, um, and probably, uh, I don't forget, but somewhere I had a little secret, man, that for that herb, for that farm. Uh -huh, it uh -huh. was like, man, they should say, man, Bone, who you flying there? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. What time you say, man, Nolan about to come down, and Nolan come down, man, Nolan come down, I got Nolan. Beasley, Dante Green, <laughs> boom, they put a show on. I was like, stay in like, man, who these young motherfuckers, man? These niggas flying, don't go yeah. away. Then one day they come back. Isaiah, uh, what's my swan? Swan. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Lord, Shorty, uh, Chris Wright. We were so deep on the back. Like, damn, we had about nine of these little jokes. We couldn't yeah. even get them all out there, right? Yeah. And uh, all yeah. the little teens, uh, rasses, all the teens, they still in my players. They motherfucker with the head. Man, you supposed to be in the game, man. You, you on the bench and all that, right? Yeah, but I yeah, said, man, y'all yeah. have to fly the man, man, for me, man. I definitely appreciate that, man. And so what you, what you think about Keith Goody, man? Like, he been around... The basketball world so long. I mean, he done coached the likes of Melo and Mentor Sangersell and 
Marco, you name you name he done been around them all. What why you think a guy like him can't get the keys to his own college program? Well, you know, I you know, a guy me and me and goods, you know, we talk all the time, man. And, mm. and just, you know, the same guy smile and 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 shake your hand every day, be mm. the same guys won't hire you. Mm -hmm. It be the same guys that call you looking for a player, need mm -hmm. your evaluation. Mm -hmm. Want you to give him a player too. Mm -hmm. Give me a name. How good is this kid? One, you know, one mm -hmm. good expertise. But a lot of guys just won't take a chance, mm -hmm. man. And I always say, you know, we had this conversation early. Most of the time it's us, man. It won't yeah. help each other. Right, us is us. Us is yeah. us, huh, yes. man? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. So you end up starting DC Salt, man. One of the most prestigious AU programs in the history of the country, man. First of all, two questions. How did you start? What made you start it? And what made you decide on that name, DC Assault? Well, we we um, we were Team Assault at first. But what ended up happening, man, is that I started coaching under the uh, PG Jaguars. Okay. And uh, Mike, me and Mike Sumner. Um, so what happened was when we – I used to coach over at Columbia Park Rec. And mm -hmm. me and Troy, we were always was really close, like brothers. Mm -hmm. So I went over to Columbia Park to, to coach. And from there – me and Troy was like, let's start our own team. Mm -hmm. You know, we were with the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. So we put together our roster and we started this team. We first, man, the crazy part is our name was, uh, we were Team Reebok one year, Planet Reebok. You remember oh, the yeah? commercial with yeah. Spike Lee? Right, yeah. With Sam Cassell gave us all the Reebok stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Sam, shout Sam, out to Sam. Yeah, oh, he's so, coming on. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So Sam gave us Reebok stuff because of Mike Brown. Right, okay. You know, Mike was representing Sam now. Okay. So then this a new shoe company come out, and it's called the Ariel Assault mm -hmm. Shoe. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so from there, we get all these shoes. They wanted Walt Williams to wear their shoe, and Mike Lynn Elmore them represent Walt. Right, right. So Mike get the shoe right. to all the kids. So we had to change the name from Planet Reebok to Team Assault because of the shoe that came out. The shoe, conflict of interest. Yeah. So okay. the shoe, the shoe never did anything. Right. But from there, and when we signed with Adidas, mm -hmm. they wanted to name it to put where we're from. So we named it DC Assault. Okay. 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 Yeah. Cool. Cool. And Mike Brown, you said now did Mike another basketball of mine too. Uh, so, so your initial start off, guys, was you, um, uh, Troy, Troy. Weaver. For people who don't know Troy, we were a GM of Detroit Pistons. Yes. Uh, and was it Mike Summit or, or Mike Summit? Okay. Yes, Mike. Summit. And then Mike Brown came on. Okay. And from there, Troy born on Damon Hand, okay. okay. who run the program DC Premier now. Okay. So um, Troy and Damon were friends, and uh -huh. Troy uh, Damon knew Mike. Right. And then me and Moose, me and Mike Sumner was okay. best friends. So Mike was with me okay. coaching. So you look. So I'm looking at you, and I'm, look, I'm looking at Troy. I mean, and and, and I know Dan. You said Damon and, and Mike Sumner, but and Mike Brown. Those 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 least. Well, Mike Sumner too. I don't know a lot about Damon's personality, but those strong personalities, strong basketball opinions. Like, what was some of them nights nice, like in the in the war room when y'all had to make a decision on certain kids? They want was gonna play sixteen or seventeen when y'all was in the beginning, but when you only could take twelve or fifteen, man, how was those little like? Those well, little, what's the name? <clears throat> you know, Mike is very sharp. Right. You know, Troy was the X and O's guy. Right, right, right. You know, and then Troy have a, you know, Troy have this demeanor that, you know, he's gonna want what he want to. Right. And me, I'm just I'm the go getter. Right. You know, if we right. need a kid that's hard, I'm going over Southeast, pick up a young right. Right. You know, right. I'm going to go get the talent. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And for me, Brown and uh, Troy would, would always bump heads. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think Troy would win right. most yeah. of those nights. Right. And me right. and Moose and Damon, we just fell back. But I would go and get the kids from right. all over. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I be on Troy. Man, I mean, Troy have a lot of battles. And also, Mike, man, I be... I don't want to, you know, they GM, so I don't want to put their basketball opinion publicly, right? Uh -huh. But I had to prove them wrong uh -huh. on a lot of, on a lot of uh -huh. stuff, right? Yeah. You know, they, they, that throwback shit, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a, that, that's a concept for another day, man. So you just say Troy was a coach. He always an X and O dude. But did you see Troy Weaver becoming a GM of a NBA basketball pro, uh, program? Yes. Did you see that? Yes, I did. I did. I seen it. Uh, Troy is a gym rat. Mm-hmm. He was a guy that got the kids better. Mm -hmm. He trained all those guys. Um, and like I said, he was an X and O guy. Mm -hmm. And he was a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, I always 
envision him going as far as, you know, basketball can take him mm -hmm. because he was always a special person, man. And he walked a straight line, man, mm -hmm. and did it the right way. Did it the right so way. So I always knew he was going to be special mm -hmm. in the business. It'd be, it'd be good sometimes to see the good guy who <clears throat> went, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're right, he jumped over all the hurdles, didn't get caught up in the streets and all yeah. that, man, and it paid off. Uh, and I and I remember I used to be talking to a couple of guys that was overseas. They be like, man, Trey Band one. He was like, man, Troy's at my game. I'm like, man, what country you in? Like he he was all over. He just a, a school watching the game. Used to chase them games too. You be in junior high games and yeah, recreations, yeah. church leagues. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah he was all yeah. over. Ain't Trey. nobody gonna outwork me man, yeah, when it yeah, comes yeah. to getting the players. So. And I was, I was gonna ask you later yeah. on that line. Do you know yeah. think anybody in the business would use your heyday without working? No, 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 no. I I don't. Uh, and most of the guys know of anybody watching. Right. You know, they'll tell me, you know, they see me come to the gym and it's like, oh, hey, shit. Yeah, yeah. Here he come. Right, right. You right, know, right, and, right, and, and, yeah. and the guy had a player that was good enough. Oh, shit. Here he come. Yeah, you know? yeah. and, but if I was going to go after something, I was going to get it. Man. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when y'all put that DC Assault together or the first team together, do you remember that first team? Do you remember that? Starting five or at least four, six. Or seven I don't. Years, I don't remember it, but we had some players, man. Like I started out, you know, I had eighth and ninth graders playing seventeen. Now I had Delonte Hill, I had Frank McQueen, Frank McQueen, uh, Willie, little Willie, uh, Willie, uh, damn, Willie is from out of Palmer Park, but Willie played on that McNamara team with Delonte. Okay. Um, Damn, how could I forget Willie's name? But anyway, Lil, Lil Willie, um, Damon Pearson, uh, kid Kevin Johnson went to Dunbar, played at Ohio State in football. Oh, yeah. um, you had eighth graders and ninth graders. Yeah, when I took under. Delonte, Delonte was 13 when I first got Delonte Hill, mm -hmm. and he played on my 15 under at the rec. Mm -hmm. So when we registered AU, Delonte was literally going to ninth grade and following summer. He played 17 under and 19 under. Mm. It wasn't no, I didn't, these guys play their guys at the age group. Now, right. so many guys repeating and the game has changed so right. much, man. You might have a guy 18 playing and 15 under, mm -hmm. 16 under because of the grade. Mm -hmm. We always played our kids mm -hmm. up. Damn, that's strong because you said 17. Yo, you talking about 12 graders. Yeah. 11, 11 going to 12 or 12. Yeah. And you yeah, sure. okay, yeah. yo, they, yeah. they, they had the fire in them. Really. Yeah, and we had some battles. Yeah, you oh, know, yeah. playing against guys like uh, Rand. Uh, what's the guy? What's, no, what's the kid went to uh, Michigan? Um, uh, um, uh, the big boy or the. No, the guard. He scored a lot. Oh, Ramir, Ramir Robinson? No, he's um, from here. Oh, from here? Oh, Bullock. Bullock. Oh, we, man. Bullock, Bullock oh, Children's, them, they had they had some mobs, man, but we played against them, man. We played Lou Lou Wilson and, and Executive 3 had a 19 under team. I mean, we was getting the championships in, the, in all the tournaments here local oh, yeah. playing against them guys, you know. So, y'all so were on the road. They was already battle tested right? oh, yeah, from, they from the beltway. Yeah, and you had to be tough to play with us. You right. couldn't. You couldn't put the uniform on if you ain't had no heart. Right, yeah, and I'm gonna get to that too down the line too, right there. <laughs> uh -huh. What's the name, man? I remember I got a call from my man Brian Waller, man. He was coaching Parkdale at the time. Yes. Um, he say, man, he say, bone. He played with my my um, team at Urban Collision, CB uh -huh. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. So he called. He say, man, what you doing, man? Would you come and check my practice out? I ride out there, man. The practice already started. I'm in the I'm in the stands. I'm looking at the stand. I see this Linky kid, man, shooting that thing from all over the place. Mid range, all the glass, footwork, run. He wasn't missing in the drills. He wasn't missing in the scrimmages. He didn't miss. So I say, man, who the hell is this dude at the practice? He said, man, this the dude. See them tennis shoes we got on. This is why we got him because this dude, man, Demar Johnson, man. So, when did you first encounter Demar Johnson? That was my first encounter with him. My first, first encounter, man. He was in the ninth grade at Bladensburg. Okay. He didn't have no grades. Okay. His grandfather. And his family lived over by, by Watts Playground. Okay. So he was on the playground. Kurt Smith called me one night and mm -hmm. was like, Kurt, you got to get past here. Yeah. So I go past there, see the kid. And I'm like, who, who are you? Right. Like, Where you come from? Yeah. So I said, man, you want to play AU? Right. He was like, I don't care. I'm like, all right, well, who I need to talk to? Right, right. So he, he was like my cousin. So he called his cousin. Rest in peace, Terry. That's DJ Cousin passed away last year. And I'm on the phone. I say, how you doing? This is uh, Curtis. He said, Curtis, this Terry, man. We've been trying to put DJ with you. 
Oh, Terry man. went to Parkdale with us. So from that day on, he Damn. was he was with us. So we transferred him over to Parkdale oh, with okay. Ice now, okay. you know, to try okay. to get him straight. Okay. And uh, of course, that didn't work. I mean, it worked out as as best it, it you know it could. Mm. Um, and Ice was the perfect person for man, him. You perfect know? human being. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Ice, you know, and dealt with DJ man, and it just. You know, he started playing AU. He got around them other players. And one thing about kids, they get around each other. And when they get close, they they put together whatever story they want to put together to play with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, man, mm -hmm. I want to transfer. I want to go over there. I want to go over there. You know, mm -hmm. so that started getting in his head a little bit. And DJ was, you know, his his his. He, they wanted him kind of get away from the neighborhood and stuff he was also in. Mm -hmm. So we ended up moving him to another school. But Ice, you know, again. If if I could have left him there just for ice, he would have been there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, cause, because he was one of the, DJ's one of the first youngest, and he young, way younger than me, always. But I haven't heard a dude from the earlier saying straight to the lead since JoJo Hunter and mm -hmm. and Stacy Roberts and all them guys. Man, I was just like, man, did you ever think back and say he could have jumped that Cincinnati and went right there? Or you yeah, think? he well he could he could have left straight out of high school. And mm -hmm. what happened was we. Uh, at the time, Sonny Vaccaro was mm -hmm. was advising us on okay. everything, mm -hmm. and that year Sonny had a few guys who are GMs and stuff and mm -hmm. scouts, and he would get his evaluations from them, mm -hmm. and they had sort of projected that DJ probably would go anywhere from seventeen to twenty five okay. if he came straight out. Right. So Sonny was like, "Well, why not year? send him one year to okay. college?" Okay. So it came down to you know, mm -hmm. uh, you. Uh, UConn, uh, Troy was at Pitt, mm -hmm. and then Cincinnati, and so he chose Cincinnati, okay. and and you know he was there for eight months, nine yeah, I mean, months. Kenya Mark was a man, full grown yes, man, yeah. full grown man, yeah. yeah. Kenya Mark, yeah. Yeah, that was a good pick. So, so if Demar don't hurt his neck in the Cox in Atlanta, what you think? What you think we looking at? Do you think mm, his career would look like? I, I think I think he'd have had a a solid, really solid career. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, Probably, and if he worked hard enough, I think he could have had a career similar to like a Joe Johnson because okay. he was that caliber of player. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the crazy part is if he played today, he'd be one of the best players because all they do is shoot threes right, yeah. now. You right. know what I mean? Right. Everybody can right. shoot a three. Right. You're six, nine, you're away from the basket, you know. Right. But I think he'd have had a, a really strong, you know, really good career. I mean, like I said, Keith Bogans played in the league about 13 years, I think. That's my man right there, you Keith know? Bogans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hard hat on, yeah. You know. So I know you had a lot of teams, so this might be a tough question, but who's you? if you had to think about who you think was your most talented team? I would, I mean, I, I, I would have to go with DJ them team. Okay, yeah. Okay. Because, you know, with... Kevin Lyle, no. right. Well, Kevin, Kevin was the year before DJ. Okay. Uh, but it was DJ Keith Bogans, Sheik, Kadoza? Dirk, yeah, Dirk, okay. Dirk, uh, Payne, Payne. Okay. Uh, Kevin Lyle was on that. Yeah, that's the year Kevin seen. Yeah, but those kids were younger than Kevin. Okay, but they played up. Okay, um, Val Brown, oh, my man, um, Val Brown, and they were just so tough, man. Right. You know, right. like, right. and then right. the year before, the year after that, we had, you know, any them years with Demar. It was Bogans, DeMar, LaFonte, Al Miller, Brian Chase, Cliff Hawkins. Uh, and the young guys was like Bernard, James White. They were the young guys. But that team, uh, we had the big boy from Dunbar, Baltimore, um, that came up with Tay, though. The big, he was the center for them. From Merle? Yeah, Dunbar, Baltimore. Elliot? No, no Elliot. Uh, uh, hmm. I forgot his name, but he was a really good player. So right. that mob, I think, was the most talented. Right. Man. I mean, you're talking about Kentucky, so, Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech, Eric Branham, right. you know, uh, yeah. DJ, Kentucky, uh, Bogans, you got Cliff Hawkins, mm -hmm. Kentucky. You Eric know. Branham, another name that people don't be mentioning, man, yeah. fly on the radar, man. Yeah. We had a D.C. Baltimore game at Baltimore Civic Center. This was this one, um, uh, my man from Maryland, um, the shooter boys. Elliot. No, it's the shooter from the uh, went to the Wizards. Dixon. Dixon. Okay. Was fine back then, man. So he, he and the friend, the first whole first quarter, going to the second quarter, destroying it. 
And the whole time, Irk ran him on the team, keep on saying, man, let me get him. Let, let me check him. He was just frying, right? So Fat Wheel, rest in peace, was coaching. <laughs> and um, I said, man, let him get him, man. Let him play. He wanted it. Shit. Yeah. Nobody else ain't doing nothing. When I tell you, Slim yeah, locked yeah, it up. Yeah, Slim is yeah, coming back to the, yeah. to the, to the, to the huddle. So I'm like, he scored another basket. I'm walking home. Yeah. I was like, Lord, man, he sat yeah, down, strapped him yeah. 94. I was like, yeah, shorty yeah. tough as nails, yeah, man. Having them, man, like I said, him, Val Brown, Cliff Hawkins, man. I mean, then Sheik. Yeah. I mean, couldn't nobody, and we played full court man to man, Slim. We didn't, wasn't no, no zone. I probably got five point guards, all of them almost high majors. Well, yeah. So it ain't enough minutes for all of them unless yeah. we do play unless full you court. Play, you let them go. You know, so right. everybody pick up one. And when you're going to play hard and you rest for a little bit, we're going to sub. You know, we might go three or four small ones on the court, but ain't nobody getting the ball up. Right, right. So, so, so you take that team. You just said that you that Tyler team, and you lock him in the gym, and you take that Beasley and Nolan team, mm -hmm. and you lock him in the gym. You putting all we we working miracles now. We put them in the, all the same timeline, right? The best out of seven. It's gonna go seven. I can tell it's you going that. Seven. It will go okay, seven. It's going seven. Uh, uh, I mean, that team was tough. I just. The only reason I liked that older team was because they were a different type of tough man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, Nolan and them, Mike and them were, you know, they were team was good. Now on days we had Navarro, right, yeah. we was tough like yeah, that team right, back in the day. Right, but right. when Navarro wasn't there, yeah. we wasn't as tough, you know. Yeah. I mean, but those kids were they were they were very good, but. But these kids came from something different. Right, yeah. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't picking no kids up in no nice homes. Man. Right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I had to go around around Minnesota Avenue and going yeah. into the oil over there, dirt, yeah. and them hiding in the stall, don't want to go to practice. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> they was different, man, right, you know. Right. So, um, you know, not only did they win a lot of games, but mm. they would win any fight, too. Right, yeah. You know, yeah. and it, it was hard to handle, too, man. And, 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 and you said the name Navarro ended up playing linebacker for the 49ers. They say, man, y'all have to drop Navarro on some top-tier NBA showing up dudes, man, man look, on that road. Look, man, we walk in that gym, man. We playing against the O.J. Mayos. Man, Navarro, you got him. Navarro will follow him to the bathroom, <laughs> go to the huddle. I'd be like, come on over here, man. Well, yeah. He had they huddle, like Josh Crittenden. I mean, anybody that, that that came out on that court, man. Right. Navarro, they heart was in his in his pocket, man, by like third, fourth time trip up the, up the uh, court, man. And Slim was playing linebacker. So he they play yeah. live. We ain't even let him practice with us no more. We was running the same stuff when he was young. So we told him, focus on football. You handle that. We'll do this. And when you want to go on a trip, you're more than welcome. But and Nolan then, was happy when he did go on a trip. And Coach, I want to go. And y'all and y'all just dropped one nigga like, Mayo had a big name coming out, man. Yeah. Yeah. And he ain't seen none of that. Nah, nah. We had, man, we, them, them kids, man, like I said, they, Navarro, man, we knew football was his sport, though. Right. Because when we right. go to see him play over there at Suitland, you know, he was, he was, Dominating, man. Yeah, I was going to see him play too. He run that joint and he was yeah. licking you on the defense end, then yes. running over you yeah. on the offense end, right? Yeah, Charlie was special, man. Yeah, man, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. Get out here because I want to. I remember Melvin come one day and say, Man, meet Charlie. I met one of them little back rows on, on, off of, um, um, what's the back row? Marlboro Pike. Uh -huh. He come out with the car, give him a couple of dollars, some uh -huh. clothes, right? I said, Dad, Charlie, like he live in Southeast. He ain't, he, he ain't like he was, he ain't like he was out there. Yeah, that, and, right? he, and, 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 and also, that's a, a a blessing of him right. because he he chose the right crowd, man. Right. And right. He had a great father and mother, right. man. And Charlie didn't get into much of anything. And right. going to suit and all his friends right. over there, he could have easily went the wrong way, man. Right. But again, you know, he did the right way. Nick Lynch was rest in peace. Nick was the coach over at Suitland. Okay. Nicky, Nicky mentored uh, Navarro. And he had some good guys in his corner. Melvin, right. we all was in his right. corner, man, right. mentoring him. And he never turned left, man, which was so thankful. Right. And speaking of the toughness, like, you had a lot. We know you had a lot of Tyler come out there. But just go in any error and name me a five, uh, just a five all tough man team, and you can put him in any position. Just give me five dudes. And I know Navarro would make one of those. Navarro, uh, Val Brown. Yeah, okay. uh, I got one. I had uh, one. Okay. We had a kid named Dominique Sutton. I bought him from North Carolina. He played with Nolan now. 
but he okay. went to Kansas State too. Okay. So uh, guys like Navarro, mm -hmm. uh, Val Brown, mm -hmm. um, actually Sheik. Sheik? Yes, Sheik okay. Harrison was that too. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Kotcher okay. out of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would, I mean, I would, I, I would have to put the kid Dominique Sutton in there. Okay, I, I was, I was thinking you would say, what about Dirk Payne? I thought he would make it. Would he yeah. make it, or he was a bucket? Well, more? Dirk, Dirk was a, um, Dirk was a high energy guy. Mm -hmm. um, Dirk wasn't going to lock guys up like mm -hmm. these guys. You know, I mean, I would, I would, I would probably. You know, if if I didn't take Dominique Sutton, I probably would have to take Cliff Hawkins. Okay. You know, Cliff was yeah. really good. Cliff yeah. may all met in Tim Gray. Oh yeah. First team. Do Cliff did rest in peace? No. Not, not, not that. Cliff Hawkins played at Kentucky. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm thinking about. Went to Potomac out in right. Virginia. Right. Who I'm, I'm thinking about? What's Cliff? Cliff. Like? Yeah. Cliff, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, man. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Cliff yeah. Hawkins, right? You right? He was the yeah, he can boogie. Yeah. He can boogie. What's the name? So, who who was DC assault? Who was that team when y'all was in that road? Like, man, we got these jokers today. Man, we got to get an extra pep talk to, man. Well, back when we first started, man, uh, team out of New York, Riverside Church. Mm -hmm. And, man, I mean, they would they would mercy rule us, man. Like, oh, yeah. if you're down by 20 with, like, two minutes left, they stop the game. Yeah. It's like every year they would mercy us, man. Um they were really good. It was a team out of New Orleans, New Orleans Jazz. Uh, they had like uh, uh, Chris Duhon mm -hmm. and Maurice, Mo, Mo uh, the little guy played in the league a long time. Mo. Uh, oh, um, I'm going to tell Mo. Uh, he went to me. Alabama. Mm -hmm. tell me. But we couldn't beat them. We probably owned three to them. We couldn't, right. you know. Couldn't do that with them. No, nah, they always got us. They found a way. Oh, yeah. But. I mean, I, I would say those were the only two teams that really had our number, right. you know. But and we started, we ended up beating uh, Riverside Church right. probably uh, mid low uh, low two thousands, mm -hmm. you know, early 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 two thousand. We we ended up getting them. When the nineties, I had that. They had your number. Yeah, in the early nineties. Then right. we ended. Up, I think we ended up getting them probably about ninety eight. Right. Yeah. So, what's the other team on there? Was it Grosso's or something? Or Gauchos. So, so they were strong with them at that time. But they were a Nike. Yeah, I think Riverside Church was the strongest up right, in New okay. York. Okay. But I mean, they had, you know, I mean, one year, I mean, we had a mob: Delonte Hill, Mark Kotcher, Sheik, Attila Cosby, Kevin Lai. I had Bogans and Demar, Bogans and Demar, DJ coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. They Mercy Rose, but they had Elton Brand, Ron Artis, Eric Barkley. <laughs> well, Lamar Lamar was with uh, he played with he started with Riverside, but then he ended up leaving though, right. and then he ended up playing with someone else. But he played my guy Gary Charles. But we beat Lamar's team, Lamar uh, Khalid Alamine. Right. We beat them. Okay, yeah, yeah. They told me they said when y'all beat Lamar's team, I guess in Baltimore somewhere. Yeah, they said that kind of spread the heat of Sunny and all that. Yeah, yeah. That. Gary Charles who run the. Uh, Panthers program asked us, could we please get on the phone with Sonny McCarroll? And, uh, you know, of course, from there, Mike Brown cut the deal. Oh, yeah, Mike. Right <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, the you know, right next here. thing you know, we we fly to Adidas, man, mm -hmm. to the meeting, man. And, you know, Mike, Mike, you know, man, Mike going Mike gonna to yeah. get to the chase. You know well, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah but it, it was good. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And, yeah, so y'all yeah, beat them. They said it was loaded too. Y'all beat him up there in, in, in Baltimore. Oh, no, yeah, They'll turn up good. there and all yeah. that, right? Yeah. What's what's one of the players on, on your program, man? That you secretly just just voted for? That you wanted to see them win just because they play so hard. They, you know, was just a great kid. You wanted to just see get to the next level. You had any special ones like that that you that wasn't no. a blue chipper, but it was on a verge, on a cuff. Well, I don't I don't think I really had any one in mm -hmm. particular. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, of course, the kids that came from rougher circumstance, you know, rougher environments mm -hmm. and tough homes, and you know, the kids like a Frank McQueen. I, you mm -hmm. know, I of course I gave more to certain guys, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it wasn't any one in particular, you mm -hmm. know. And even mm -hmm. with like, 
you know, the, the kid who had the most talent as anybody in the program in 20 years was Beasley. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you want to see him succeed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because the kid just went through a lot as a kid. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, and you know, sometimes, man, basketball is most of these kids' only way out, man. Right, you know, right. so it's always easy to, to, to pull one closer to mm -hmm. you and because they need more. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I used to express that, you know, when Beasley lived with Nolan and I, you know, mm -hmm. that he didn't need what Nolan needed. Mm -hmm. He needed, you know, he Nolan was fine. Nolan mm -hmm. going to be fine with or without mm -hmm. basketball. Mm -hmm. But Mike needed, he needed more. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, yeah. I guess you would know you live around him. It's, it's crazy because I had them teens over the farm. I had teens sometimes. I might have Beasley on the bench and KD on the bench. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it's like I gave Beasley more attention based on the fact that when the whistle was over, I knew he was thinking differently, right? Yeah. And somebody like KD, I'm looking at your mother. She job doing a good job. She got she focused. You ain't down there right. cutting into nobody. You ain't doing no extra. That's right. So I kind of ne neglect him more on the attention yeah. side. and not saying yeah. too much to him. And I was like, damn, I be thinking sometimes, like, say, some little kid, they probably can't wait a difference. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it was like, yeah. Shorty yeah. needed more more attention. Like, like Taiwan, I never said too much to Taiwan. Yeah. Nolan, of course, was, was yeah. cool. Taiwan played was a couple of times, but... Like Katie, it's like I'm like they they slang, they had it together. Like you know what I'm saying? Mike was just trying to find himself, like yeah, you say, coming yeah, from um, yeah, yeah. different situation, yeah. man. But, Mike uh, took a lot more work though. You know, right. Mike 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 you had to we, we stayed on him a lot, man, mm -hmm. you know. Uh just you know, that's a whole nother story. But yeah, he you know, yeah. it, it panned out. I mean, everything worked out. Right. He got his he accomplished his dream, mm -hmm. you know, so a lot of what we did work on helped him, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and he went his own direction and mm. stopped making his own choices mm -hmm. and decisions, you know? Right, right. So, but he, he made it. I mean, right. it was his dream. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And, um, and, and what's the name? I know, like, in, um, um, since we on Mike, I'm going to touch him later on, but since we here, like, did did, did, did y'all have a fallout or did y'all grew each other or was just more, you know, Man, you know, I just, just journeys? You know, you know, you know, um, when you, when you are, on your way to your life about to change, mm -hmm. you know, everything about you change, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, you know, I always say, you know, people love their family members, mm -hmm. but sometimes you don't love them as much as you love them when he's about to be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, everybody now, that's my cousin, that's mm -hmm. my cousin, that's my, you know. So it, it, it became sort of a distraction. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was... Everything was going smooth, mm -hmm. you know, but what happened was when all these people started to come into play, mm -hmm. we had to remove ourselves away from it because uh, the kid actions wasn't what we were used to him doing while under our roof. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and, and the kid just, he a kid. He wanted to, he got money now. Mm -hmm. He got all the cars. He can get all the women. Everything changed, and if you're not ready to be that disciplined guy, mm -hmm. and you feel now you don't want to listen to nobody because of where you are, it usually don't work out anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so it was it just it just was a uh, sort of uh, uh, I thought an equal split because you know people got into the kid ear, mm -hmm. and again I never knew what the real issue was. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's something down the road me and him will right, be able to talk about, about yeah. you know. Um, be good. But to this day, mm -hmm. I don't know how it went left or sideways. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard a lot of things, different mm -hmm. things. But again, um, none of the things that I've heard was true. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And as a, you know, as a man, I hope he's older now mm -hmm. and one day. Because I'd like to know what was his reasoning mm -hmm. for switching up on us, you know, on, on our family and on me, you know. Again, I put that kid, I cheated my own children mm -hmm. to make sure he was good and make sure he got to everywhere he wanted to be and do everything he wanted to do. But, again, it's, it's no love loss. I still right. love the kid, right. you know. Yeah, well, yeah. I definitely hope y'all had that conversation as a grown adult because, like I say, I'm mental for a living and I work with kids, so I already know. That certain age, man, like like they got they even got a a, a rule to, to call the IRA Act with those kids that had 
got committed for murder charges, actually coming home because yeah. they couldn't make long-term right. decisions at a young That's age, right? right? So we can't really, you know, as yeah. you already know, yeah. we can't beat him up. And yeah. like you say, with you 18, 19, 21, somebody back an armor truck and say, this yours, and we gone, and pull off. You that's know what right. I'm saying? He, he, so, you know, that's it's true. a tough joint. Yeah, but and it's I hard was, for yeah. kids to, right. to separate who's really right. for them, who with them, you know, because, okay, right. you know, they're getting pussy now. Right. You know, right. which that's always, they, you know, you said that, uh, what did you say was undefeated? I'm going to say, I'm just saying, well, pussy undefeated. I'm gonna say, man, that, <laughs> man, you, you said the streets. Mind. You on my mind. But that's undefeated. Man. That say, never yeah, loses. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah, think you yeah, beating yeah, it up yeah, and don't yeah, lose. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. right. You're right. You're right. That's why you say that, right? Yeah. What's the thing? So, yeah, but, um, so, man, 95, man, you had, um, Seven players, y'all been in the national championship, man. I mean, y'all played the national tournament. And seven players. I think y'all made it to the Sweet Sixteen or something, or or, or, or one of those things. Yeah, we. Yeah, we actually we may have had six players. I oh think. yeah. Yeah, uh, but during that time, you know, we had a kid. I don't know if I can remember those kids. Damani Smith, mm. who went to Hampton. Uh, I think Ed Sheffy. Think Sheffy is that um, Mike Pegues. Mm-hmm. Played at uh, Dematha, mm-hmm. now coaching in the coaching game. Uh, who else? Did Keith Bogans come down? Delonte, what is it? Delonte. Delonte, 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 Delonte right. Hill, yeah. Um, but I know it was only like six or seven, and we made it to the Final Four. Oh, you were the Final Four? We lost four? in Final Four, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we yeah. lost to a Richmond team. Yeah, because y'all played my man Steven Jack and he played with Houston or something? Yeah, Houston, yeah. How, how we got started? It was six, seven, six. He had a little wiggle and all that back then. With yeah, yeah. Steve, Steve was the goods, you oh, know. Yeah. Steve was the goods. He, you know. But again, you know, it ain't you ain't gonna have but so much wiggle against DC guys. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, like, cause right. all that we we some of the first to do all right, that yeah. wiggle and crossover. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So outside of New York, you know, DC created something totally different. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And New York had, you know. At all, but had we had, shimmy. yeah, we yeah, had that right, special, right, right, right. you know, we had hands over. all right. that. We we were special, so it wasn't too much wiggling us though when right. it came because it wasn't nothing they hadn't seen before. Right, yeah. Cause I know they said I, I think they end up telling that when Steven went to Oak Hill, I think him and Shepherd somebody mm-hmm. got real tight and say mm-hmm. Shepherd gave him the gave him the extra the extra next level to yeah, the, to the yeah, shimmy, right? Yeah, that was his guy, and he took it up to the next level. Yeah, that he was his a, guy. Yeah, he got him yeah. in this mix, right? Yeah, the Jack, yeah, he's somebody put. Supposed to be coming through too, man. Is he? Right? Yeah, okay, yeah, I love that. I talked to him when I when I came home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was you know that's my mind. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I like to see guys that, that have backgrounds, tough background, and end up making and make the adjustment in yeah. life. You know what I'm saying? So he one of the ones I root from. Yeah. From a dis and my man Gary Neal, they was together in uh San. That's right, San, San Antonio. Antonio. Yes. And they used yeah. to call me late at night, talking trash. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh-huh. one or two drinks or whatever. But some yeah. good kids yeah. though, right? Yeah. The yeah. good kids, yeah. man. So. How did I was told that the Dita contract came because, or the the conversation came after y'all beat Lamar Odom in the Baltimore and mm-hmm. Sonny on the phone and all that. Mm-hmm. Was that the initial start or was it? No, well, we else? were with Nike. Okay. Um, we end up John Thompson. Okay. Got his idea. Okay. okay. With Nike he called Ravelin, and Rav took care. Of it. The deal wasn't a lot. Mm-hmm. Really, I'm still coming out of pocket. Right. You know, I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm eating at the time, so right, you know right, what I mean? Right, it wasn't right, nothing, right, we right. gonna go anyway, right. you know what I mean? So they end up sending us a few tennis shoes and uniforms. So mm-hmm. at that time, like I said, we was team assault. Mm-hmm. So what happened when we beat them, we end up uh, getting on the phone with Sonny. Mm-hmm. So we were going to the Nike event at the end of July down at the Peach Jam, we had to go. And Sonny wanted us to come to Vegas to his event. Mm-hmm. So it, it was conflict of interest, but again, my man Brown got it done. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Troy was yeah, pissed. Yeah, yeah. You know, but because Troy is a Nike guy, you know, right. Troy loved Nike, right. and uh, so man, we took the kids on out to Vegas. Man, we final fours, four hundred teams lost final four, uh, lost to uh, Charlie Bell and them, the Michigan Mustangs. They were really good too, mm-hmm. and uh, we we. Uh, Went on, the kids came back, then they went to Augusta, and I think they lost in the championship down at the Nike event. Yeah. 
I think to uh, Ronald Curry and them, I think. Oh, y'all, want, y'all want the few programs played in both? Y'all played Beater and Nike the same? Well, that, just that year. Just and that then, year? Yeah, so then we had to make a decision, man, what we wanted to do. And right. Troy was taking a job, okay. so it wasn't that hard of a issue at that point because right. Troy was leaving, so we, me and Brown didn't have to fight with, with Troy, you right. know. So, uh, I mean, being who we were, me and Mike, Right, you know, yeah, make street happen, guys. Make happen, who don't want right. who don't want to be with Sonny with Curry? Right, yeah, you right. know, this is the I'm man. This is the Godfather, like, right here. Like he also no, up, man. And, and who don't want to be a part right, of that? Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, he promised, "Hey, I'm gonna take care of you guys. You my guys." Ooh, and then we were just seeing everything unfold. We was looking at how, you know, how. Kobe and mm-hmm. Tracy and all these dudes, they the shoe deal thing was going there. Mm-hmm. And we had the next thing cracking there. We had Lamar Johnson. Mm-hmm. You know, outside of Lamar, DJ was the next thing, mm-hmm. you know. So we went on with, with Sonny, man, and, and it was a great relationship, you know. Mm-hmm. And DJ never got the shoe deal that we thought he would get. Right. But again, you know, all the politics kick right, in right. certain time you just don't know about. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I could say, Sonny, every time I seen him from a distance, of course, I was never in his presence. I said, man, yeah, like he part of one of them families, man. Yeah. The way he moved, the way he talked, you know what I'm yeah, saying? He yeah. was so sure of himself yeah. that he was battling Phil Nike them, man. That yeah. was that was a hell of a, yeah. a hell of yeah. a rumble right there, yeah. man. Yeah, that's all he wanted to do is beat them. That, that, that's that what our goal. meetings was. <laughs> I don't give a damn what it take. Just beat them in my face. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I would if I want a kid here. I'd be like, Sonny, I need a few pairs of shoes. Shit, he sent a kid 12 boxes. Man. I mean, all gear, everything. Right. Kids like, yeah, I sent all that? Right. They're like, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And he understood the language probably being from wherever he came from his background. And those small little things like that mean so much. You yeah. know what I'm saying? People think yeah. you got to back an armor truck up. Yeah. Just small, little, subtle yeah. stuff like that is crazy. And I heard um, Gilbert Reeves them talking about DJ recently, man. They talk as DJ... As if, man, he was like a Michael Jordan coming up through yeah, that, DJ through was that different, time, man. man. DJ was different, man. I have an article where um, they been saying DJ may be the first player to leave high school early, 11th grade. Mm. You know, I mean, he, DJ was good. You know, it's, again, it's a lot of things If we, when I look back that we could have done. DJ was both for his time. Mm-hmm. DJ was 6'9 guard. People's like, why he don't play? He never played in the post. He never played in the post. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when you just look at guys now that's in the league, I mean, mm-hmm. six, eight, six, nine guys, what DJ do now is the norm. It's the norm. It's you the know, norm. it's normal nowadays. These guys, six, eight, six, nine, you he know. He alien back then, though. He was eight. Yeah. And what's your opinion about ranking fourth graders and fifth graders? What's your opinion about that, ranking mm-hmm. them? Well, all that, all that stuff is a uh, business bone. Okay. You know, people paying – for these services, man, to see their kid name on this stuff, man. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I, I, how could you get caught up yeah. in a kid that's in the fourth grade? Right. Man? You know, yeah. um, I re, it's been some names of some kids that's been top everything and you ain't never heard of them again. Mm-hmm. Or if you pull up most of those lists, if, if, if somebody had the, um, if they can go back in the archives and pull up, old rankings. I would bet you if you pulled up a sixth grade ranking, Mm -hmm. you probably never heard from most of those kids once they got to 11th grade. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be a few names in there that you, you know, but that stuff to me, that that don't matter, man. And what's your opinion, the pros and the cons with the reclassification? Well, well, one thing is, is, is the pros is that everybody doing it. Mm-hmm. So it's not like one kid doing it. I mean, yeah. we used to know a kid going to prep school or mm-hmm. two guys. Mm-hmm. Now, every kid in the area mm-hmm. has repeated. Right. So I don't, I don't know what you know if there is a con to it right. because it's it's the normal. It's the normal. This is what they're doing now. Kids are graduating at twenty years old, man. Right. Okay. And and what you think? What's the what's the um, as far as the AU stuff like? Right. What, what you think is the most Positive thing about the AU, and then what you think the most worst thing about AU? Well, if it's the worst. Well, I, I think that um, a lot of AU teams have guys that have 
um, a lot of, you, you'll get a lot of former players, you'll mm -hmm. get a lot of uh, street guys mm -hmm. who want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think some programs are a little too lenient. Mm -hmm. I think they, they kiss the players' ass today. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, because it's now it's a business. Everybody want to kiss the player, but who is great. Nobody want to coach the kids. So mm -hmm. for me, um, it just it's just different. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, and I can only speak for me, you know. Um, I was always tough on the best players on, in my program. Mm -hmm. I didn't care who you was. I mm -hmm. set an example by getting you. So if you're the best player, I'm going to make you the example to scale all the other ones. Right. But right. nowadays, they cater to the best one. Right. I mean, so, and it's just, it's a big business now, man. Because right. a lot of the former NBA players and sports and all, they kill the AU whenever you hear them yeah. getting these shows and all that. AU is not, you, it's just like high school. Mm -hmm. You got good high school coaches and you got bad high school coaches. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, high school coaches was the one getting paid. Mm -hmm. High school coach, I asked for a Cadillac in a minute for a player. Mm -hmm. right. You know, back in the 70s, mm -hmm. early 80s, the, the high school players, the high school coaches ran everything. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, the AAU guys run it, but the AAU guys put probably the most time in. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, you know, I probably got criticized, but I'm the one that's getting a kid out of jail. I'm the one taking him to his probation officer. Mm -hmm. I'm the one got to make sure he eat when he go home. And a lot of times they don't because they work at the school all day. And most time they got their own family that they attend to. You know, so, and for us, we spread at our arms and I had to make sure the right people were around to make sure we mentoring the kids and giving them what they need. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but the game has just changed so much mm -hmm. now, man. Yeah, I can contest that. Cause I used to send him down that game with little clothes, little joints, yeah. look out for sure, and he going to be good. He gonna be this and all this. So you did some a lot of behind the scene work that probably not gonna show up in the stat book. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You was giving out nil deals <laughs> back then. Before now they they right. got it going on right. now. We was doing that in the early '90s, right. yeah. bro. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. My yeah. kids would have on all day mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they be loaded. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and now they getting paid to wear this stuff mm -hmm. now. Yeah. You yeah. know. And, and and that's crazy, man. But. Man, with all your recruiting, all your man, I seen you chase junior high games down church league. How the hell you miss KD? Why he? I, well, I didn't CSO? miss him. I didn't miss him. That was my number one target. But Wanda wouldn't let me get him. She wouldn't let him come on over to me, man. I don't know why, man. Me and Wanda were we got really cool. We were always real good, you right, know. Um, right. I take my hat off to her and what right. she did, man. From a parent for, standpoint, yeah. From a parent standpoint, you know, I'm gonna tell you how deep it go. Kevin Dad grew up on my street in Palmer Park. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was getting him. Right. When I seen the father over at the junior high, I went to see Navarro right. and see the father. That's my son right there. Who? The tall one. I said, what? Oh, man, I'm in the car. I'm happy. I got Oh, I got the rent. Okay, okay. But Wanda, was, Wanda wasn't going for it. Right, yeah. Me and Wanda done been to lunch. Me and Wanda to talk. I done been to the house. Home visit, everything. Right, right. But, you know, she and, – and, and one thing I also think that with Kevin, what they wanted too, I think they always wanted Kevin to be the headliner, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, even though he would have been the headliner. Mm -hmm. But, again, being on the team with Mike and Nolan and, you know, every night you might not be the headliner. Mm -hmm. And, and 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 the way we coach the kids, or I had my guys coach them, you know, I'm not going to let you take any shot you want. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know. So I think they wanted Kevin to be. Free range. Yeah. And 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 at the end of the day, it ended up being the right decision. Right, right, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it all panned out. Yeah, because I, I know the streets, you just, like I say, I always talk about his, his mother, too, and, you know, a lot of and my little mentor and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because, man, that, like, she did a phenomenal job. I mean, obviously, the father, I don't know what Rody did. He might did a phenomenal job, mm -hmm. too, but mm -hmm. I kind of seen her in the game come down very far. You know, you seen her, right? Yes. But um, but it was always rumored on the street. They would say that, man, you ain't give him a pair of tennis shoes or something, or nah, they asked for some tennis shoes. That's not true, because actually, I did give him shoes. And, okay. I, and I only gave the dad shoes for Kevin, because Kevin's feet was really right, big. Right, what I heard. Kevin was in, like, seventh grade. Okay. So, but... 
I didn't give him shoes then because of who kept. Because in seventh grade, Kevin Durant wasn't that good, right. you know, right. honestly speaking. Right. But he was so tall and wiry long. You could just see. Mm -hmm. And he liked to shoot the ball. And mm -hmm. then again, the guy Stink at the rec did a great job with mm -hmm. Kevin, man. I mean, Kevin became a player, man. He transformed into something special. Mm -hmm. But um, it definitely wasn't that. I mean, like I said, me and Wanda had a great. Kevin could have had all the shoes he wanted. The truck would have backed up. Mm -hmm. If I called Sonny McCurl and said, the, they, the mother and them probably could have got stock in the deal. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. not at all, though. No, nah, that, yeah. that definitely wasn't the case. And and if and when I did with the dad, I did it because we, me and Wayne grew up together, okay. you know, on the same block. Mm -hmm. So, it wasn't no strings attached. Mm -hmm. But I knew I had to go through Wanda to get right, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Wanda was the big dog. Oh, Wanda was yeah, it. Okay. That, you know right, what I mean? Shout out to Wanda. Yeah, Wanda was yeah, Sheriff yeah, Jack. Shout out to Wanda, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of on Katie, one thing with him. So, did you see the, the piece he did on Showtime? Yeah, uh, I did. What was your What was your opinion about that? Um, I thought it. I thought it was a good piece. Um, mm. I told. Um, I was telling a few people who asked about it. I thought that it probably could have been a two or three piece thing because mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think that probably could have got some recognition, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. But I thought it was it was a good, you know, piece mm -hmm. on the county. I thought it gave us some good exposure. Mm -hmm. um, which of course everybody kind of know. Well, I guess they don't, but it's so many players come from this this mm -hmm. area, man. Right. That, yeah. You know, if they don't know directly, mm -hmm. you know, they know indirectly, and then when they seen that piece, mm -hmm. it really opened their eyes to who PG County is. Because mm -hmm. I actually was seeing some of the behind the scenes Edison, You know, what I'm saying um, uh, uh, Kirk Frazier did some little work on their behind the scenes, um, uh, and I was looking, I was like, damn. It's a lot of other pros in that PG came out of earlier, yeah. and I was like giving names that. Well, I guess you know they had their vision. You know, what I'm saying it ended up being a nice piece. Of, mm -hmm. uh, it showed the journey. You know, what I'm saying of, you know what was going on out there. So it was you know I overall liked it also, but I just thought it was a lot of more pros sure. that, that could have been another short. It could have been like, could, like yeah. they asked me go ahead, like you say do a two or two, three, yeah. two or three yeah. part yeah. and really give them a lot of a lot of yeah. more spicy wings out there. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, I, but, I thought um, I thought so too. I yeah. thought so too, but. But overall, I thought it was a good piece, and especially for Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Jenkins and those guys, you know, um, right. for doing that piece. Yeah, to, yeah, to Jimmy Shorty, light. Jimmy, your heat, man. Yes. Shorty's a little hard worker, yes, man. Yes, he you know, is, man. He's yeah, a grind, yeah, the man. pastor's son, man. Yes, I always mess is, with him. Man. I say, man, give me some of that money y'all getting out there, man. That's a big church. The last oh, stuff man. going on he, here, good kid, yes, though. Yes, man, yeah. he is, man. And Pastor Jenkins, man, he, he raised a good, good kid, yeah, man. Yeah. That kid is, him and his brother, they, his sister, too. They they great kids, man. So. Right. Right, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, what's the name? I heard, a, I heard a story. I was in, y'all was out Vegas. I want to say, and they say Carlos Boos and them had a mob out there, just, just running everybody out the building, destroyed them. And they said they just beat, beat the crap out somebody. And they said they was coming up to the gym, and somebody asked Boos, they said, um, who y'all got next? They say Boos said it don't matter who we got next. And they said they had y'all up next, mm -hmm. and say man, y'all made the game ugly in the first half, man. They yeah, say y'all yeah, yeah, made it out of reach yeah, in the first yeah, half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did, but. You know, I would, I would egg, egg the kids on. I'm gonna man. say you give me extra pep talk, oh, man. Y'all heard that, right? You know, <laughs> but also, man, like y'all ain't gonna eat. You know, oh, y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. come in and lay an egg. You ain't eating today, so you, you know. back in the oh, that's the stuff they yeah, motivate us yeah, all. Yeah, you, you ain't lose, eat. you ain't eat. Yeah, you go home, right, you ain't get no right, McDonald's. You, you right. brought that over. You brought yeah, that back to them. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But they had a mob though. The, the, the Sean Stevenson. Was on that team. They had the team. Yeah, I heard they had. I heard they had. They said Sean. See that they was naming that. They had the I twins. Said, I said they loaded, man. They had them twins. That's in the league now. Lopez. They had them up. God dang it! Yeah, what's the name? So out of all the teams that you played, then what did y'all play that? That Atlanta Celtics. They was the mob, but that that uh, we um, big played, boy. Them. We done played the Celtics a few times, and I will tell you what happened was we ended up playing the Celtics, but I I think they beat us, but I think. It have been a, a better game, but our um, big kid had to leave um, from Vegas, and we have the kid, um, just damn kid, played play for Golden State, man. Uh, he was like number seven pick, uh, B. Ultras, B. Bidgers, uh, Andres, oh, yeah, B. Yeah. B. B. Yeah. Bidgers, yeah, yeah, yeah. he played in Bidgers, right? Bidgers, college, he played with, um, um. He ain't playing he college. college. No, he was overseas. He was in. He was in overseas. Then he came over here and got drafted. I think he got drafted by Golden State. Okay. Andre is left-handed, big kid, about six eleven. So what happened was we had him playing with us for a while, mm -hmm. and um, 
but he had to go home. So it was hard playing against Dwight. Dwight, man, no, man. Yeah. That was too much. They had him all. Yeah. Right, yeah. Josh, Josh Smith. Like, every time you look up the ball, the rim getting. He right on that yeah, joint. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 right that joint. yeah, yeah. So, so you had a lot of coaches come to your program. How many coaches came to your program and actually got college jobs, coaching jobs? Mm. You know, Bone, I, I don't know the number right off mm. top. Some of the program, uh, names some of the programs they went to. Um, that's still active. Well, we got, um, let's see where I start. You know, of course, Troy, not in college. Um, Corey McCray up at our Boston College now. Mm -hmm. David Cox, who was just the head coach of Rhode Island. He's over in Maryland yeah, now. Maryland, okay. uh, Todd Bozeman came through. Mm -hmm. um, program uh mike pegues who was just at louisville he was the interim coach he's mm -hmm. now at butler mm -hmm. um damn you know man you know you uh, know yeah uh, you, you named that you, you named dante Delonte. Delonte's not coaching and Delonte left the school he was at last year he was at stephen f austin but okay. Delonte. Um, lost his dad, so okay. he took uh, leave and uh -huh. didn't go back. Uh, but Bruce was just at Maryland, mm -hmm. Bruce Shingler. Right. Um, hey, you put some in there. You got some, them some Nolan. Real, 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 real. Nolan is How at, you forget uh, Nolan? Man, Nolan, you heard I him, mean, man. The man well, forgot you. No, no, he he, he named you last, bro. He just changed. <laughs> he just changed schools. <laughs> Nolan was at Duke. Uh, Tyler Thornton, who played at Duke. Tyler's at Howard. Mm -hmm. Eric Atkins, that played at Notre Dame. He was okay. just over Dang. GW. Okay. Um, okay. Man, it's, it's, it's that ain't even it though. I, right. I know for that's a fact. It, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Yeah. When when you first seen Melo play, man, what you was thinking, Camelo? Oh, he the goods. He the goods. Yeah. You know he, you know he really got his name off of us. Hold on, hold on now. What, what you saying now? Getting my board. We went now. up. They give me, they give me listen, the grooves now. Listen, hold on now. Listen. Please. No, okay, what I'm ahead. saying is, we went up there to play him, and okay. he fried us, <laughs> and he was on the map from there. <laughs> oh, you see, that's how he got his name because he fried y'all. The, the safety, you know, what y'all did to hey, look, and he we, did it up. I don't know who was God. I think it was James White. <laughs> but man, <clears throat> bone. And then he he went to Vegas. He did A B C D. But I'm talking about like tenth grade. Like he's special. This came on nowhere. This is. This. I mean, we went up there to just scrimmage. It wasn't even a real game. And I mean, I think he demolished us like we was little boy. God. It was like, I know they kept on saying they was trying to compare him with him and DJ back at that level. Uh -huh. So he was a little more positive than D. D, D yeah, than well, well, what Melo, what Melo always had, Melo always had a little body and he played aggressive. Melo played on the block. Mm -hmm. You know, Man, Melo Asian, mixed they, it up. They, yeah, they, yeah. And, and he was legit with back then 6'6, six, six, but then in college 6'8. Melo was a problem because if you're too small, he's going to take you to the block. Right. And then if you're too slow, you're going to get around you. And then he can shoot it. Like, he was the jack of all trades. You know what I'm saying? He right. wasn't the most athletic guy, right. but he didn't need to because he was so physical. Even when he wasn't being strong, right. but he was always physical, man. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the guys, kids from Baltimore, a lot of them play mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll they'll play real physical. They're gritty. They always be gritty and tough yeah. up there. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, why it seemed like, why Georgetown and Merle didn't get a lot of DC Assault guys? Well, I mean, you know, what happened with me and Marlon, um, it went back uh, uh, in terms of DJ, mm -hmm. where DJ wanted to go to North Carolina. North Carolina didn't recruit him because mm -hmm. they just said he's not going to college. Mm -hmm. So his next school was Marlon, mm -hmm. and we couldn't make it happen. Mm -hmm. So we backed away from Marlon, mm -hmm. and actually we took DJ up to Marlon to meet with the staff and Gary Williams didn't show up. He didn't show Gary? No. Okay. So his assistance was there. And then um, years later, Gary, we wanted to sit down together mm -hmm. and chop it up, see mm -hmm. how we could make the relationship work. And during that time, I think Nolan and all those guys were like ninth graders, I think. And I sat down to lunch with Gary and I, Gary had an opening, the job opening. So he asked me, who do I have any name for him to hire? So I said, David Cox. And during that time, Cox was coaching Nolan. He had coached them. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm saying those kids love Nolan. You, on that team before it was Lumpy, Chris, Chris Wright, Nolan, uh, Adrian Bowie, uh, Mike Beasley, mm. which now Maryland has a legitimate shot at these kids with David Cox right. over there on the staff. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. So Gary said he couldn't do it, something, something, something. So I said, well, what about Troy Weaver? He was like, Troy don't have his degree. I said, yes, he do. Mm -hmm. You know, but I just got the vibe. The guy really just didn't want to hire one of my guys. Mm -hmm. And and he ended up hiring Michael Adams on the staff, mm -hmm. you know. So me and Gary, and then later on down the years, we chopped it up. Uh, the kid Wally Judge was going to transfer over to Maryland. And me and Gary got good. Georgetown always had a great relationship with them. Um, you know, the few guys that they did have, I just thought that guys didn't – I didn't think they did a good job. And then when Brodus was over there, Brodus, the last guy, Brodus guy was uh, Austin Freeman, mm -hmm. which, you know um, – and again, a lot of times, man, what people don't understand, you're giving too much credit when you don't really – run the show with all the kids. They got parents too mm -hmm. who run their recruiting. I don't control all the all the recruiting. Mm -hmm. You know, I'ma have a two or three or four who may want me to help with the recruit. Mm -hmm. But then the other four or five, they parents deal with that. Now I can give them advice. I can some may say, Curtis, can you come sit in on the home visits? Mm -hmm. But you do what you can do to, I mean Brodus when got Austin done. Mr. F the Freeman family loved him. They like John, mm -hmm. so at the end of the day, you know, it, it really wasn't no issue, mm -hmm. you know, like people may really, really, really right, think, right, you know, right. but it, it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. out, of all the all, out of all the college coach you uh, came and counted with, who was the best recruiter? I know back in the day, they, left, they said Lefty Zell to sleep outside your house for Merle. They said, yeah, you know, he'd be at the church everywhere, man. Who was the best recruiters you've seen in your time? best recruiter you know that's hard bone because i feel like the coaches are only the head coaches are only as good as their assistants mm -hmm. most of the assistants are the ones get Go everything get done mm -hmm. you know so i mean watching calipari i think he is the best mm -hmm. cal is calipari is very very different man mm -hmm. he's smooth mm -hmm. he make it happen got that lingo too he got it, you know right. what I mean? So Cal know how to how to work it and get it done. You know, people right. think that guys like Calipari, Kentucky got to cheat. Mm -hmm. But guys want to go play for Cal, mm -hmm. you know. Tino got that, got that gift Tino for Gab, Tino got too. the gift for Gab. He's yeah. smooth. Yeah. Yes, he's smooth. Yeah. You know, I like Huggins. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, Hugs will, Hugs will hang out with your uncle, mm -hmm. your grandfather, whoever. Oh, well, yeah. You know, Hugs used to come to town and come over Palm Park and sit on the porch with me till 2, 3 in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all I was talking about, committed. He, he, he committed. I like his team because he be having he be having them gritty, 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 gritty little tees, man. Yeah. 94 feet yeah. type joints, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, then give me your top five uh, college coaches of all time as far as coaching, their coaching ability. You, you, you had to uh, select them. Any order, not specific. I mean, order, you know, you, you, you have to, you know, one of the top coaches I like that I think is great, and he don't get enough credit, is Leonard Hamilton mm. at Florida, Florida. State. Mm. I think Leonard is a really good coach. I mean, of course, I like Kay. You know, I like Huggins. Um, that's... Um, that's a tough one. Yeah. I don't know because I don't know if I can put a, a certain five. I mean, Bill Seff is great. Every mm -hmm. year he's playing in the Final Four and Izzo. So uh, then my guys, Izzo. Izzo, Izzo. I wait yes, for that. That's yes. what I want to say. Izzo. K Izzo. K Izzo. I like Seff. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think Leonard Hamilton is a, is a hell of a coach without him getting these players that these guys get. Right. Leonard ain't getting five McDonald's All Americans. Right. You know what I mean, and they ain't putting in pros in the league too. I think I think that Gary Williams underrated. Gary he, he was, was good. He was rumbling Duke in North well, Carolina with some regular. Well, see, and and back then, what happened with college basketball? 
you didn't have guys leaving one and done. And mm -hmm. Gary teams always stayed. stayed. Mm -hmm. See, and they 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 had that seniority. Mm -hmm. You know, they were good. That's what I like about Michigan. Mm -hmm. Michigan State, I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, Izzo, he keep them guys around, mm -hmm. and they get better. What about Calhoun? Uh, Calhoun, well, uh, Calhoun, but then that's that's a hard knock on. That's that's knocking my somebody out of that fifth, <laughs> that top five. But you know, Calhoun was a Calhoun was a. Uh, Calhoun was a was a great coach, man. Right. I mean, Jay Wright. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, so yeah. it's hard to put a five. You know, like I said, I, I it's guys that I like. Like, I think Huggins could coach because again, Huggins don't get the McDonald's All Americans that most of these other schools get. Mm -hmm. So, and Hugs gonna play in March. He gonna get in the tournament. Might win a few games before right. you know he might be at the Final Four. Right. But he don't get – he gets some rugged guys who just want to play basketball. Exactly, exactly. Uh, how many McDonald uh, you had, McDonald players you had? I think we had around seven. Seven. Mark Concha mm -hmm. was first. Kevin Lyde. Mm -hmm. DJ. Mm -hmm. Keith Bogans. Mm -hmm. James White. Nola. Nolan, Mike, Austin. Eight. Nine. Mellow Trimble. Okay. Up until I love, 13. I love, I love Mellow Trimble. Yeah. What there, about yeah. Cook? Cook? Oh, Quinn. Quinn Damn. Quinn, How Quinn. I forget that. Yeah, Cook. Yeah, That's yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah, Cook. Yeah, yeah. Okay, That's okay. 10. So not counting, like I said, my Texas team. Mm -hmm. You know, I had Marcus Smart. Mm -hmm. I had oh, yeah, DC Assault, Texas? Texas Assault, yeah. Oh, yeah, you snuck that in. I, I heard Isaiah, about it. I didn't know that. Wouldn't do Isaiah, that. Okay. Isaiah Austin. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were loaded, too. Damn. So how many how many pros you had? I know you can't name them, but I mean, how many you think if you had to just take a guess at it, around around the boat? Um, um, probably you know, had to say man about twenty something. Twenty something. Damn. And overseas you, you oh, got you got throw another can, you got throw another uh hundred uh, there. Uh, you got to count another seventy five a hundred to that because almost every player that probably came through the program and besides a few that didn't play college ball long. Mm -hmm. But if the ones who played college and and played four years of college, most of them probably went overseas to at least try mm -hmm. to have a career. Mm -hmm. And then some of it didn't work because at the end they all wanted to play basketball mm -hmm. for money. Mm -hmm. But some weren't good enough to really make a lot of money. But all of them probably didn't taste it, right. the, the waters over there. Right. Uh, what's, what's your thoughts about the NBA? Uh, they had that rookie symposium when the players go, I guess they were for a couple of days, and they tell them about all the hard stories of family members and financial advisors and all that. What's your opinion on that right there? Well, you know what? Um, I don't, I mean, I, I think it's a good thing. Some kids need to hear certain things. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, me, myself, there's no way somebody could get up on this podium and tell me about my family right. mm -hmm. who has drove all the miles to take me to school, mm -hmm. who have paid for my training all my life, mm -hmm. who had took me to all my AAU team program mm -hmm. uh, tournaments, right. uh, who been around me when I didn't have anything, have can sit up there and now tell me I'm not supposed to trust my uncle. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they give you financial guys, you know, a lot of them screw up kids' money, mm -hmm. so it's their guys. It's their guys. They, they you know, they guys. recommend some guys. You know, so I don't believe in it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that I think the, the, my vision has always been if the team could have their own, um, like a program within the organization to focus on the rookie kids, mm -hmm. spend time around them. I think that would be the perfect route because. Some kids, man, don't bring family with them. That's a big adjustment, being in the NBA. But I think that, you know, you should have some people work for you that can help them uh, grow, you know, the do's and the don'ts. You know, if they want to go to the club, you know, you got some people, you know, you got a group that work for you. Right. Some yeah. young guys that's in the, that's in the organization, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure he, he's getting home, he's leaving the club, he's not hanging, mm -hmm. he's not drinking too much. I, 
You know, and I know it's called babysitting, but sometimes some of them guys are yeah, too some young. Of, they some need, of them it. need it. Some of them need and it. And the team make enough money. Mm -hmm. Shit, the team billion worth billion dollars. Mm -hmm. You could pay two guys a uh, hundred thousand a piece. Yeah. Uh, ain't gonna hurt them. No, nah, it ain't gonna hurt them. You know, so I, I think with the NBA, I think that would be something really good to do. Each organization have their own program within. Right. right. Okay. Okay, so um, United States of America versus Curtis Malone, man. Can we touch on any of that? Yeah. So how did you feel the night or the day that they came and grabbed I me? Mean, like, what's going through your mind? I like, like, for example, like, when they grabbed me, what's going through my mind was, damn, when I, when I got the handcuffs on and the, the cameras on, I'm like, my grandma's about to see she's about to be official. She know I'm selling drugs, I'm hustling, right? That's what I'm thinking for a grandma at this time. You know, the weirdest things come to your mind, right? What's going through your mind as you're getting locked up? Well, the first thing went through my mind, Bone, was I'm gone. Okay. <laughs> These people <laughs> wash my ass up. <laughs> you know, so that's what I, you know, that's my first. And, and, and then, you know, I was embarrassed that the, the, the hurt that I, you know, so many people looked up to me, man. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, um, my dad is older. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I ain't going to be able to be with him. Mm -hmm. You know, him and my mom. You know, so it, I just felt, I just felt disgusted, mm -hmm. man. Like, I got to face this. Right. But I also, how do I go through this and not, and get back? Mm -hmm. I don't want all my reputation to be wrong. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, for me, it was just like, you know, one step at a time, man. Right. You know, and then when I went to court, uh, I went to Sunday, uh, Saturday court, mm -hmm. and the judge said, oh, he can get out of here. He going across the street. I said, oh, shit. District court. Oh, yeah, district court. Mandatory she said, he don't minimum. belong over here. Mandatory minimum. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> what the hell I done got myself into? Right. But, right. you know, I was just more disappointed in right. the letdown. Of everybody, right. man, my family, man. Right. So, what what was going on in your life at that moment where you felt like that you had to take a chance? You had to guess what was going on? Selfishness, mm -hmm. you know, greedy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not being patient, you know. Um, again, thinking I could dibble and dabble mm -hmm. and still a few dollars here and there, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, and it had worked for a while. All right. You know, um, but again, it was just me being, I was being selfish, man. Not thinking about nobody but me. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was you big of you, man, because a lot of people don't hold responsibility to, yeah. to that. So that, that, that was commendable for you to do that, man. I was expecting some other stuff. So I definitely respect not questioning your character, but a lot of people don't want to take that responsibility. Yes. So, so, so that, yeah. def that definitely was big on you. So when you were in the feds, man, and you first got that first four o'clock count, they say count time, four o'clock. Count, man. He's like, what's going on your back? That's another thing tripped me over. They said that first. They took the old head say, don't mess the 4 o'clock count up. They count yeah. the whole country at yeah. 4 o'clock. Well, now, well, you know, now, it's, it's, they do it, though, while you're in bed. So they can uh, shine and you, as long as your face shown. They don't, uh, they come through the room and, uh, like, you, but you better not be in the bathroom or somewhere. Right. And mess it up, right. you know what I'm saying? Like right. you said. So and what time they do that though? It's, it's about four thirty-five o'clock. So they make everybody get in the bed at four. It's for that count, or people be no people already. Are okay, oh, you okay. talking about doing the day? The daytime. Oh four, yeah, that's still count. there. Yeah, when the shifts change. Right. Yeah. yeah oh yeah, 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 ain't no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you better not go to the bathroom doing that either. So anything you got to do with the microwave, the bathroom, if you got a shit, you better go do it. Right. Because if you mess that count up, it's going down. Hey, Slim. Hey, Slim. Yeah. My first day in the phase, I was in Oakdale, Louisiana, on my first four o'clock count. I'm in there with a Chicago dude, and a North Carolina dude, and me, and nobody was on the top bunk. And this North Carolina dude had a thing for DC dudes that I don't have. He, he left Texas or County somewhere where somebody got into it with him, some other DC dudes. So he in this joint. Man, DC dudes make me sick. Them niggas think they that, they think they this, da 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 da. And I'm saying, he know it. I already introduced myself as a DC guy. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I said, who you talking, who you referring to? He said, man, I'm referring to you. Now we stand up, waiting for the, the four o'clock count. We bust out our bunk. You can hear the, you can hear them walking down Jeez. the bushing there, right? Uh huh. So man, when I said, hey, who, who you talking to? So he steps over in range, and he come in, he broke the security line. I hit him, he go out, boom. 
when he hit the ground, it was so quiet because nobody wasn't counting. You could hear him hit the ground. You could hear my feet say, skirt, skirt, when I threw the punch. His feet say, skirt, skirt, when he fall. So all I hear, all these keys running to get on the top level, right? Now, keep in mind, I'm on the I'm largest drug case in what's name. I done beat 35 life. I actually got nervous because I'm thinking about the old dude saying, you fuck up the 4 o'clock count. It's yeah. on, right? Yeah. And they run up in that joint, man. And, uh, but he slept, right? Uh, uh, no, the <laughs> Chicago, Chicago dude, I, I, the first day meeting him, he, he going to work. He lift him up, lean him on the bunk. He lean on the bunk. So tiny gap, they say, what's going on? What's going on? They looking at him. He, he's still halfway out, but he's looking at me, just staring at me. And then the Chicago dude, they look at me, what happened? I don't say nothing. Chicago dude say, nah, when y'all said four o'clock clown, he jumped off the bed rushing. He was sleeping. He fell, and he hit his head. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, I helped him up, you know. And they looking at him, and they keep seeing him look at me. They, so look, they, they ain't looking at my hand, oh, right? Dang. They said, they looking at him. So they said, okay. They kept counting, and they said, Chambers, come and see us when the count is we count. And I went down there, and they say, man, you come up here with that DC shit, we're going to hide you, right? Yeah. But I'm saying, out of all the stuff I got in trouble with, I actually was that scared because all the old dudes in the pool room, bars, so you messed the four o'clock count up, yeah. man, they go hide you, right? This is my first day on the conference. That's why I actually bought yeah, the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the, no, the, the four o'clock it, count. It was real, you know, and luckily, you know, I went to the camp, man. Okay. So, you know, as soon as I got to the camp, you know, the dudes been there, they, they give you the rules, you know what right, I mean? Right. DC dudes meet you when you get there. So it was it was smooth, though. Right. I, ain't, I I learned about that camp, man, real, that, that count real quick, though, but mm. I, End up being some good police up Fort Dix. Mm. You know, sometimes, man, I've been in the bed. They count me sleep. Right, yeah. You know, but it depends on who who, who working that day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I ain't had no problem usually with the count, though. But it depends on who was working. We mm -hmm. were able to get away with some things. Because mm -hmm. some of them officers ain't care. Right, right. And, and what, what you learned about your family and friends when you was locked up? Uh, you know what, man? I learned, uh, I learned a lot of you know, the true colors in a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I realized everybody wasn't genuine, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, you know, I just realized, man, that you can't put anybody before family, man, mm -hmm. because my family was, was rolled with me, man, a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. You know, I had friends that made sure my father, he came to see me every month, every mm -hmm. time he could, mm -hmm. you know, so... You know, just the guys that was making sure he got up there, man, mm -hmm. and that meant the world to me. And those were 30, 40 year friends, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, you know, in the business I was in with the youth and all that, man, you you got so much going on, man. You know, it's a lot of uh, uh, bullshit around you anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of envy around you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, no matter how many hands you shake and kick it with, you always gonna have some guys that envy, you know, that that, that want to probably be you. You know what I mean? Uh, because again, I wore a lot of hats, man. Mm -hmm. But I learned, you know, I learned true colors, man. But mm -hmm. I, I really just realized how to never put anything before family, man. Mm -hmm. And I heard you and your father had a real tight, tight relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ashley Curtis School talked a lot about. You said me a lot about, you know, how tight you and your father was yeah. and. Yeah. You know, your father was a cool, cool too, dude, yes. right? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, then. So man, what was the first when you made your first collect call back home and you talking to Nolan? And I'm just, you know, uh, what was that conversation? What was y'all talked about? What'd you tell him? Mm. Was he confused or Well, you know, not not really. I think cause Sydney was more uh involved in everything. Mm -hmm. Sydney was there, caught everything. You know, mm -hmm. Nolan was in school mm -hmm. or on his way back to school. But you know, just son, I you know I screwed up, mm -hmm. you know, and he understood. Mm -hmm. You know, he probably didn't really understand, mm -hmm. you know, but you know he made it clear that he gonna ride with me. Mm -hmm. It don't matter, like you pops. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and all I can do is let him know. You know, we gonna get through it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So he was in my corner. You know, from Sydney, and them would come to the jail to see me over DC jail. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I never lost that 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 relationship. That bond was mm -hmm. was never. Um, I never questioned that mm -hmm. bond. It was what, always there. What about your DC assault family, your coaches, your family, your parents, any any, any of those people uh, back out on you? Well, we we had you know for the most part, I had a lot of my coaches who 
rolled with me mm -hmm. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a few mm -hmm. that we had our disagreements okay. with um, who, you know, didn't ride with me okay. and the relationship kind of got cloudy. Okay. Um, but for the most part, it was because I had so many teams, man. Mm -hmm. I had coaches and I had parents who was coming to see me, man. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I got up to the camp, man, my uh, I had uh, 80 visitor forms sent in. You know, mm. my counselor up there said he ain't never seen no shit like this in his life. Right, yeah. You know, so I had a lot of people that 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 wanted to see me, that wanted mm -hmm. to come up. Mm -hmm. You know, so I didn't I didn't lose no a lot of support, man. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the ones I did lose kind of it hurt, mm -hmm. you know, uh because I never thought you know, some of those relationships you will I would lose going through that, mm -hmm. you know, but it did. Mm -hmm. And uh but again, no love lost from me. Right. You know, I ain't bitter at okay. nobody, That's man. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and I ain't come back to be bitter and worried about right. what anybody else is doing, man, because I got to keep my focus on me and and what's, you know, what I got going on. All right. Did you get Did you get any shots, any disciplinary uh, write-ups when you locked up yeah. for anything? Yeah. I got a, uh, I got a uh, phone shot okay. I got sent from the camp. Mm -hmm. Um I got a, uh, and when I got to the camp, I got when I got sent from the camp to Fort Dix, I caught a drinking shot. So mm -hmm. I was supposed to go back to a camp. So mm -hmm. I stayed mm -hmm. up Fort Dix for the rest of the time. So a uh, few little other talking to the officer, you know, some little uh, 400 shots. Mm -hmm. You know, I probably had like two of them. Oh, okay. You know. Okay. I mean, when you was incarcerated and you was gone, did you like the direction that DC Assault went into? Well, D.C. Assault didn't go in no direction because D.C. Assault ended when I left. Oh, okay. You know, but, but those guys started their own program. Okay. So mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know, um, it really, we didn't agree. Mm -hmm. And they wanted, you know, we could have kept the name and we tried to keep the name for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, you know, Damon and Mike wanted their own program. Mm -hmm. So... Again, it was understandable, you know what I'm saying? But they started their own team, DC Premier, but that wasn't DC Assault. Oh, okay, yeah. See, I, I thought they just transferred the name, but they ended up doing their mm -hmm. own little Yeah, they did their own. So thing. the Under Armour and all that was all part of the new the new thing with their team. Where they got or did y'all have Under Armour? They too? we were Under Armour. Okay. DC Assault was, but what happened was um they wanted to change the name mm -hmm. and they wanted some other things changed in the contract. Mm -hmm. So um, my daughter, Sydney, name was on the contract, mm -hmm. and they didn't want her on the contract. So Sydney called Under Armour to tell them to just don't worry about us. Go ahead and get them their deal or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they ended up getting their deal. And we were, I think, Adidas for a little bit because Nolan was paying for everything. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, and I didn't fight because I could have turned it into a shit show and, and, and tried to make sure that DC Assault was still running, which mm -hmm. I think I could have, mm -hmm. but I didn't. I was just like, if they want to do their own thing, let them do their thing. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't no, like I said, it wasn't no hard feelings. Mm -hmm. I thought that the program could have continued to be because... Under Armour made it clear we don't have to change the name. Right, okay. And when you was locked up from a competitive standpoint, not an envy or jealousy, just being competitive, when you hear Keith Stevens have the team takeover and they actually taking over, you like, man, if I was out there, it would be no takeover. Well, or, or you, know what's, you know what's funny? Mm -hmm. I called Keith and Nunu them, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and I'm like, man, what the fuck is y'all naming y'all team takeover for? What the <laughs> fuck is y'all taking over? You know, so so we would have our laughs and the competitiveness, right? right? right. So, you know, again, man, Keith, you know, was – Keith was under me. It right. was with all together. Him and Nunu, everybody, we all was together. Keith was, Nunu was hustling. It was everybody yeah, yeah, running yeah, out of yeah, gyms, yeah, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, it was all love. You know right. what I mean? But again, it wasn't that much competition. And during that time, either you're really going with takeover or assault. Right. You know, right. Blue Devils Blue was Devil. kind of a little bit. They right. was getting back in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we were going to get the players. Mm -hmm. But Keith was happy when I was, you know, he was well, not happy that I was gone. Mm -hmm. But I, I talked to him one day at DC jail mm -hmm. and he said, you know, your boy's dead. 
I said, what you mean? He said, they don't stand a motherfucking chance now. <laughs> you know? So uh, we laughed about it, man. But uh, no, and Keith, man, my, take my hat off to him, boom, man. Uh, one of the top people in my corner, man, yeah. through it all, man. You know, that whole seven years, man, he was there. When I came home, been there. You know, and uh, I, I, I love him, man, and I appreciate everything he do for me, man, yeah. you know. Yeah, Shorty definitely was a workaholic, man. Like I said, him and Nunu, I come on any gym, they running it, mm -hmm. running it out them joints, man. You will think that Keith was with immigration, man. He kept yeah. a seven-footer, <laughs> six, uh, yeah. six yeah. eight with him, yeah. man. He, he going to be the one, man. I'm yeah, you, man. Sure. Watch out with yeah, him. He's going to be the one. Hustle. He, yeah, he yeah. be the one. He hustle. But, you know, in that game, it's just like what we grew up in. <laughs> right. Man, what they say, early bird, get, get the first worm. worm. You know what I'm saying? Like. I ain't believe in no sleeping. That's why I, I'm going to the elementary. You say right. your nephew play up uh, Brightwood? Right. What time they play? Mm -hmm. I'm going up there. What size he wear? Like, mm -hmm. Shawty going to have his new shoes and everything in mm -hmm. sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and even if he don't make it, because mm -hmm. I love the game, right. you know, but, shh, man, you, I was in the gym, man. Right. Keith and them know. Keith would see me in jail. Oh, shh. Uh, man, what you doing out here? Uh, it's, it's like the block, you know, you be, you be working all night and people fall on the street. You're like, man, I got to go down and sell them, give me a big coffee. Or down the corner store, give me a big coffee. I got to squeeze them several yeah, hours out here, right? Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, dude, how much you think that, uh, or if you think at all, that your situation being incarcerated hurt the DC Salt brand? Do you think it hurt it or do you think that, you know... Well, you know, anytime there's negativity mm -hmm. on anything, mm -hmm. man, um, it's 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 gonna affect it somehow. Some type of way. Now, I don't think my situation could ruin twenty years of success. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like uh, my situation didn't help, but it didn't hurt. If, if you understand what I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think that um, because one of the things the Under Armour people said is that, oh, this, this will bypass. Mm -hmm. You look right now on the news any day, a guy just, you know, besides the church shooting and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but a guy just killed a lady. It'd be on the news this mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. and it's gone next week. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the only time you hear about it, if you find out how much time he got, six months from now mm -hmm. guy was sentenced to so everything that's negative usually blow over mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. especially when you have done so much good right. you know and that's right. what the judge even told me she said i can't say you did all bad things because you've done a lot of good things you know because she you know i had a whole lot of letters set mm -hmm. but I, I didn't think it would affect the program as much and so what, what, what do you say to people that say man DC Salt was built and ran off of drug money, and that's how you able to get the top players. And what do you say, people, to think that? Well, it was started off some drug money. Okay, so, sorry. Okay. So, so make no. Okay. Hey, look, make okay. no question okay. about okay. it. Okay, I respect Early that. Early on, see, see, you get the real right here, look, man. It's chasing jewels, man. You get the real, no chasing jewels. On, okay. Early on, make no mistake, Jack. Okay. And don't they never <laughs> question, but. It wasn't nothing for my young kids to open the glove apartment. It might be thirty, forty thousand in there. Well, yeah. And they be like, What's this? <laughs> Y'all nosy, you know what I mean? But yeah, no, yeah. and you know what? And that's 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 the life that I came from. Right. So, you know, my goal was to always figure out what can I do? How can I change what I'm doing? Mm. You know, how why I can't you know, I had guys even tell my street buddies like, Man, you stupid as shit spending all that money on them kids and stuff. Right. You know, right. I had dudes joining me out. Right. But right. that's because I didn't want to keep hustling. Right. I didn't want the streets. Right. You so, yeah, I was I was ready to get out. So at that point, man, like I said, I, man, I was out the game. Shit. Mid-90s. Mid-90s, mid when the program started jumping, I was pretty much out the game. I wasn't broke. I was okay. Mm -hmm. But... I jumped back in that. I wasn't in the street. I did really well for myself mm -hmm. when I, you know, and then I always pr got a pretty good contract mm -hmm. with the shoe company. Shoe deal I just got with Under Armour was the biggest in the history of AAU basketball. Still ain't no team get, got more money than what I got. Under Armour. Yeah. And all the way back then, ain't nobody having jumped big no, yet? No. Mm -mm. 
Mm-mm. I talked to the guys now. Now under I seen an Under Armour guy up at DeMatha, and he said, "Hey man, are you getting back in?" I said, "Y'all gonna give me the same check y'all gave me?" He said, "Hell no, they we're not giving out those no more." Right, right, right. You know, right. so yeah. So hey, do you ever run into? And believe it or not, I ain't I haven't broke the law since 1989. But you still run across somebody be like, man. You're doing something, let me know, man. You'll run across people. Keep man, I get more. I get, but now nah, I'm going to tell you what I get more of. Yeah. I get more people be like, damn, Slim, you ain't tell me. Right, yeah, yeah. And you was you was for real, man, and ain't let me know. Yeah. I was like, man. So I you know they were saying when you was gone, right? Hey, look, Red, fuck that nigga. He ain't give me none of that money. Uh, you already know they got something to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he ain't give me none of yeah. that money. Yeah, he got what he supposed to yeah. get. So, yeah, job, right? you know, yeah. you going to get all that. So, yeah. yeah, but I, you know, I always run across that, man. Like I said, man, I used to. Do young guys being there, they always all they want to talk about is drugs and stuff mm-hmm. in prison and mm-hmm. when they get out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, nigga, you think I'm gonna break the law again when I get out? Good, nah, I say, you crazy. Right. You know, you a damn fool if you willing to, and, and have them them been in 15, mm-hmm. 17, mm-hmm. and they talking reckless and crazy. Mm-hmm. I said, nah, not me. Y'all can have it, man. Mm-hmm. So Okay, okay, you learned your lesson, that was good, man. Yeah. Then, let, me, let me change gears real fast. Uh who you got is your your top five players ever come out of DMV area? I, this has been a big debate forever, you know, um, all the barber shops and gyms. And we was down um, golf course when they talking about three or four different age, some 60 year olds, some 50 year olds, 40 year olds. But it was a big conversation. So I called John Thomason and I say, John, who you think the best ever coming to early? He said, hey, I say, we talking about right now, we, we trying to figure out what Durant, you might have somebody different. We had Durant. Asian Dave uh, Dantley, uh, Elgin Bella, Elgin. and uh, um, um, uh, I had I put Austin Carney also right. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, what's the name? Um, John Thompson said, "Pick the rabbit, which is Elgin Bella for people who don't know. Mm-hmm. Go down ten spots and then pick your next guy. That's how much separation you put on the joint, man." Yeah, Big John was an Elgin Bella fan too. Okay, he okay, used to okay, to. but. Um, I, I would I would I would definitely have to say Elgin. Mm. Um Is the order you just saying it? Is the order you give me a top I'm just saying No, I'm just saying the okay. top you said top five. Okay. Right? It would have to be uh Elgin. Uh, shit, is Dave Bing up there? If you say all the time, you guess he will have to be in there. I mm. mean Adrian okay. Dantley. Of course, Kevin. That fifth spot, man. Uh, I don't know. I'm a little stuck. Grant yeah. is Grant. Oh, that's Grant, that's ooh, is Grant, that not DC? DMV area, oh, yeah. Well, we were saying DMV because you we went PG and and uh, yeah, I guess I he yeah, that's Grant. DMV. Yeah, Grant definitely. I be, people forget about that damn yeah. Grant, man. Yeah, I gotta put Grant yeah. up there. And, and we had another trivia that was on, this was on social media. Uh, they were saying, go to your high school and put your top five. It don't matter what year they came out. And um, Dunbar was on there. All his team was on there. And um, the math that had a strong little mob, they put on there too. And I came with my spin on mob. And I told him, man, Dave Bing, Elgin Bella, Earl Jones, Mike Graham, and Sherman Douglas. And when I joined that, I thought about that joint. I say, man, I might take that team on the road, Ain't man. No question, on good. the road, man. Ain't no question. Uh, uh, yeah, what's the name, man? So you, you got a joint out that you could think of out, out Parkland or or, Park or, 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 or even <clears throat> anywhere. I, you know what? Uh, now, I mean, the school out there, I, I, out in Maryland, I think, man, that that probably can compete with a lot of those. I mean, it's like Northwestern. Okay. Yeah. You know, Lenny yeah. and Ice. People right. don't know how good Brian Ice, Wild Wild was. was. People yeah. don't they he was one of my favorite players, man. Um but out my school, I you know, we had some guys like Chick Lyles, mm-hmm. um, Penny Green, uh, of course Henry Hall. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a kid out there who was really good named Bernard Rankin too. Mm-hmm. I mean, Irvin Church was a really good player in the area, right. but I mean, not they weren't at the level of those five. Right, but they can boogie. But they they could boogie. Um, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they had some okay. good little players. So, yeah. Tremaine Price, you know, Lord Tremaine, you know, mm-hmm. he 
was a really, really good player in the playing of George Mason. Okay. Well, what, what's the best high school game you ever seen? Mm. That game Kirkland played up, Coolidge was a hell of a game. Who they Coolidge play against? Play, Dumba? Uh, Dumba? Oh yeah, uh, Kirk hit the last. Uh, Kirk yeah. hit the last move, the spin move. What's the name? That was a that was a hell of a game. Yeah, you, well, you wasn't up. You were you wasn't up. Um, Oak Hill Beasley against uh, Kevin right now. Yeah, you was there. Oh, cool it. Yeah, cool it. Yeah, that was the best thing I seen right there. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. That was. Hey, a, hey, I thought hey. you was more so talking about like I earned. Oh, I, oh, I earned. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. No, okay, that okay. that might that might have been the best the best game. Yeah, yeah that that might have been the best game right now. I seen. I left. I left Levin Vasquez, man. Yeah, I said I liked him. Oh, man. he's good. Yeah, I, I I liked him, man. You see how Maryland was winning? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You seen it on the high school yeah, level? Yeah. yeah. And what's the best AU game you seen? Mmm. In California, Riverside played Southern California All Stars, mm. which was like Chris Burgess and did Byron Davis play that game? Yeah, Byron. They played against Artis and all them. Oh, okay. Elton Brand. That was a mob. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say some names or some people, and just give me what, what comes to your mind about them. Um, when you first seen O.J. Mayo. Mm, good player. Uh, I didn't, you know, he, I seen OJ against us. So my first time seeing him wasn't as good as, as advertised. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? But after I seen him a few times, I thought he had, you know, I thought he would be an NBA player. I didn't see superstar. Okay. John Thompson, Georgetown coach, former coach. Uh, the best. Uh, great person, mm -hmm. uh, best shit talker ever. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I ain't never. I don't think I ever seen uh, nobody curse right. as worse than him. I think it's right. one person I know that I think is worse than John Thompson, and I told my uncle that. I oh, said yeah. you might be worse than Big John. Big John. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, Big John. Big John had a. They opened up the new arena up there in Georgetown. Uh -huh. we, we went. He gave us some tickets. We in there, man. It's full of white people. This man was cussing. I was like a little kid. They, 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 they's laughing and giggling, man. They got on the little father tops and all that, man. I say John don't cut. He don't man, got no cut cards. We ever hear that cussing, none, right? Man, he uh, don't have none. And I, I had never seen anything like it. I, I have stories, man. I went up there one day. But when I called up there, coach, I want to come to practice. This is when Sheffy was there. So he said, okay, who with you? I said, my cousin. He said, you sure it's your motherfucking cousin? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, it's my cousin, come. So I get there. They got two chairs sitting down. Mm -hmm. So they about to practice, and somebody is peeping out the door. So he blow the whistle. Go see who the F that is at my damn door. So the manager run over there. He come back. He's like, that's his dad. He said, son, you go over there and tell your father he peeped my motherfucking gym again. I'm sending you home with him. <laughs> I said, man, this man, man, I ain't, I ain't never, I ain't never seen nothing like it, man. Right. Like I said, but John, the reason yeah. they start moving them chairs away right, yeah. during the timeout, man. Mm -hmm. You know, one dude played for Big John, said for a long time he thought his name was motherfucking. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard that before, too. <laughs> I heard that before, too. They said John, tough man. Man, John was tough, man. Okay, Coach K. Uh, great. Um, great person. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, take care of his players. Mm -hmm. You know, he... Uh, Had a hell of a tree, huh? He, a hell of a tree. Yeah, he's built... Uh, a special program, man, mm -hmm. and he take care of his former players, mm -hmm. man. And if you buy into what it is he do, mm -hmm. I think he believe and trust in you, and I think he'll make sure you're taken care of too. Okay, Stephen A. Smith. Uh, Stephen A. Just a little too loud for me. Okay, okay. you know. But again, you know, uh, these guys have opinions. They like. You know, everybody got a. You know, we all got a ass. Mm -hmm. You know, assholes. So. Mm -hmm. Everybody got an opinion, 
And I just, I don't get caught up in it. I mean, Steve Nate knows stuff now, you mm -hmm. know, but sometimes I think he can overdo it with riding guys, man. Uh, sometimes I think he's a little tough for him. Mm -hmm. uh, clutch sports. Uh, man, I'm proud of Rich mm -hmm. and those guys, Maverick, them, man. And they've, I mean, they, they've showed people how it should be done, mm -hmm. man. You know, they um, have grown and built mm -hmm. a tremendous uh, bit business, man. And they've taken over the game, man. And uh, it's, it's a blessing, it's loyalty, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I, I, I think great, you know, I think they pulled a power move when they did that. Yeah, that, that, I'm I'm one of their biggest fans, man. That, that, that whole little movement just is it's crazy, man. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Them guys need to be, they need to put a blueprint on this how you do it. When they do some of man, my men, like that's the blueprint of me and my men, how yeah. I'm supposed to look. Yeah. When you give them the other side of the, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, 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 them, uh, them, them dots, them, them digits, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but LeBron yeah. believed in his guys, man, and, and he didn't let any rookie ceremony or anything else change his mind, mm -hmm. man in terms of his buddies, man. And mm -hmm. to me, man, it, it don't get no better than that. Okay. If you had to select uh, three people that you feel like had a major role in the success of DC Assault, whether it be male or female, that you don't think get enough credit, could you name three? Um, I would I would say uh I would say the three people you know, Damon had a lot of Damon worked, mm -hmm. you know, Damon really worked. Um I think that uh Damon was like my assistant, like, you know, he really was on the grind, you know, it just helped him with all the business stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, since from the day I met uh, Nolan's mom, mm -hmm. uh, my ex, Monica, was very powerful mm -hmm. in helping take DC Assault to another level. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, so I got to give her props, mm -hmm. which a lot of people didn't see all the, the stuff she was doing with helping run the nonprofit, mm -hmm. getting donations in there, man. And we we did a lot of bringing in money outside of the shoe companies. Mm -hmm. You know, we had people giving money and mm -hmm. helping to travel, that's why our budget was, we were always able to do more than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So one more, you wanna leave it to two? Um, I don't want to force it to anybody, but here's something else you can't acknowledge. No, and I, and, and I, and I think, I think um, it's, a, it's a guy um, that's like my mentor, mm -hmm. a guy named Greg Holloway. Mm -hmm. um, Greg played a major role in being supportive of DC Assault. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when those checks didn't come yet, you know, it was nothing for him to, to wire, you know, thirty, forty thousand to take air flights and different things. So mm -hmm. Greg played a very, very valuable part in, in DC Assault, you know. But I think, you know, unlike, you know, because cause it, it takes money to run a program mm -hmm. like that, you know. And if you don't have money, you really can't compete with the other guys, exactly. you know. But, again, you know, Mike left short, but Mike, I think all of us just did different things. Okay. Mike Brown was good. Mm -hmm. Troy was really good. Troy wasn't there, but these people were mm -hmm. there years, years and years right. later. You right. know, so I think okay. those were the. the and, and I know you had. You said you got a tremendous support. You had over eighty letters. Uh, I mean, a lot of letters. You had over eighty visit forms. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of support in court. But is there anybody that that disappointed you? And if you don't want to. If it ain't nobody good, if it was somebody you don't want to mention, we go to the next question, that just disappointed you that you thought they was going to show up in a different way they didn't show up, and, and they didn't. And, um, since we was going through that. Well, you know what? I think, I think, um, I think, I don't, and I really don't want to name names okay. because it was, a, it was, it was, it was a few, okay. you know, and, and then, but what I got to always just remember, Kurt, is mm -hmm. that, you know, I just can't put expectations on people mm -hmm. to have the same heart that I have mm -hmm. to have your back or have my back like I would have yours. Mm -hmm. You know, so I had to, it took a lot of praying for me not to be 
disappointed, to forgive, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. not hold a grudge. Um, so it was it was a few of those, mm -hmm. you know, but again, I never really voiced my disappointment, mm -hmm. you know, but again, I just you know, my old time I always said, Shorty, you can't make people think like you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't make people be who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't expect for people to think like you. Mm -hmm. So I, I got it, but it was, yes, it was, it was, it was a number of those. Right, okay. All right. Um, I'm a... Uh I'm a mother of one of the one of your players that played for your program, and I've run into your Whole Foods shopping, and I see you, and I come up on you, I say, Curtis Malone, you really broke my heart. I gave you my baby, and you end up getting locked up for selling drugs. Mm -hmm. What do you tell her? Well, all I can do is apologize mm -hmm. for the disappointment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things I didn't do, Kurt, is I never put my players in jeopardy. Okay. You know, I didn't do things with my kids around. Mm -hmm. Nobody actually knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was just living a double life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I would apologize, and I, you know, I know that I disappointed some. You know, mm -hmm. um, but again, all I can do is apologize, and you know, talk about you know me moving forward, mm -hmm. and I would still be there for that kid, regardless of who he is and what he do. Mm -hmm. You know, I would always. Have, uh, you know, my, my, my door will always be open for any of those kids who came through my program, mm, you know. Okay. okay. What is one of the most big misconceptions of Curtis Malone that you would like to debunk or make a comment on? Mm. I think, I mean, I'm always had a drug dealer uh, mm. tag on me, right. you know right. what I'm saying? Like, even when I wasn't. You know, that's going to be our label, Bone. You mm -hmm. know, you came home yeah. regardless, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but for me, um, I don't, I really don't know what made people may think of me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sneaky, arrogant. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I, I don't really know. What you got something? Well, yeah, well, I mean, I, so, I, I know, anything I you've heard? I mean, you know what I mean. I and, and that way, I can respond to it. Right. But again, um, I, I don't. I really don't. No, know. not actual thing. Because, like you said, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a victim of that. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. got locked up in 1989. It's 2022. Yeah. And if I make any move, and got anything to do with it, man, he, you know he hustling or he selling yeah. drugs, and I'm trying to save kids and babies, and I can't even get contracts because. Dudes yeah. talking about I'm I'm selling like yeah. 18, 1989. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so I, I was wondering was there any misconception or? or but it's always or, yeah. you know what though you know, Kurt we we always going people gonna always have you know misconceptions about mm -hmm. us man. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of the business man. That's the nature. That's life, mm -hmm. and you know you. But what I won't do is I won't feed into foolishness and I won't worry about what anyone think about me. Mm -hmm. And most people who know me and really know me, you know, those are more the people that I know believe in me. You know, I didn't, like I said, I made the mistake. Mm -hmm. Did what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Did my time. Mm -hmm. I went through that, you know, and now all I can do is move forward, man. Mm -hmm. Tell us some projects that, that you're working on currently. What, 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 what Curtis Malone doing today, 2022? Well, I um, hopefully by the end of the year I can get my book published. Mm -hmm. um, that's in the process now. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I will go into production with my doc okay. hopefully next month. Mm -hmm. um, the whole life story? Just, yeah, just a documentary. Okay. Just a doc. Okay. So um, they haven't given us the outline exactly of what the steps will be with it. Mm -hmm. But I end up signing with the guy, Kenya Burris, mm -hmm. uh, Society Inc. Um, out in L.A. Mm -hmm. And him and uh, Pusha T. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Dre the Mayor is mm -hmm. doing the uh, the doc. And okay. then Kenya have the rights to do the TV show. Oh, okay. So um, Big doing boy. that, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm also... Um, has some partnership in a technology company mm -hmm. called Campus VR. Mm -hmm. um, we've been going to colleges, uh, doing their virtual tours. Mm -hmm. 
um, high end, real high end stuff uh, that some friends I met while away. And it's amazing, you know, I was telling you earlier that I've had more people help me, you know, mm -hmm. and give me opportunity that I met away, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so the technology thing is going good. You know, it's a little slow, but again, it's only been two years we've been up and running. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing that. So again, that's Campus VR. And then uh, I hopefully, God willing, I'll open this. Uh, we should have a sports bar opened up by August. By August of 2022. Yes, 2022. Yes. And sure enough, by September, they're going to say, you in the streets. They're going to oh, say, Kirk. Man. Where you get that money say, from? They're going to say, Kirk in the streets. Hey, no, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. My niece was in the post office last week. Right. She took a picture of the guy. I didn't know who he was. She right. was like, do you know this dude? I said, no. She said, well, he was in here on the phone. Like, yeah, you know Curtis Malone opening the restaurant? Yeah. He must have came up. <laughs> yeah, but he don't come around the hood no more. Right, right. She was like, yeah. I said, I don't even know who that dude is. I said, but you know what? Man, let them talk, man. Right. Like Sonny Vicaro told me years back. He said, man, Curtis, they talk about Jesus Christ. Right, man. Yeah. So you know what? You can't worry about what people say. If they ain't talking about it, they say you ain't doing nothing right. They ain't doing nothing right. Yeah. You know? yep. So, man, yep. before we close it, man, how do you want to be remembered? Well, I want to re be remembered, man, as a, 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 a person that gave us all to his community. Mm -hmm. uh, I have enjoyed changing lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I will continue to help with kids and youth, um, mm -hmm. probably not at the basketball level, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and also I left out, I've been speaking, going to college and speaking too, mm -hmm. doing speaking engagements. Okay. So that'll pick back up mm -hmm. uh, in new, new school year. Mm -hmm. But just an just a outgoing guy, man, that will give my shirt off my back, man, just to see others smile, mm -hmm. just to see people happy. And, you know, and and be able to take and support my loved ones, man. Mm -hmm. You know, getting married, you know, very soon. Uh, really? Just, you know, just mm -hmm. ready to move on, man, in this second chapter of my life. Well, this is about our fourth. Right, this is yeah. our fourth, fourth right. quarter. So, oh, yeah. you know, we ain't got, yeah. I mean, I don't know. We right. Hopefully we got about two more quarters left. Yeah, yeah. But we just the second half overtime of this, this is, yeah, the so, game went over the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, you know, so just that's what I, you know, what I got going on, man, and just hope yeah. that people always know, and especially people who know me, man, know that, you know, where my heart is, man, right, and I right. just love, you know, I did it for 20 some years, man, giving, right. giving, giving, man. Now it's just, I got to focus on life, man. Right. That's powerful, man. Like I say, I think, you, I think you're definitely a redemption story, uh, a story of perseverance, not never giving up and quit, man. And I like your energy. I like how you're looking at life. You know what I'm saying? You ain't letting none of that cloud up what you're trying to mm -hmm. do now. Uh, I feel like I, I got a special place for your daughter sitting, just hearing how you and all walks of life with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and I even heard about when you was younger, keeping the books and doing little stuff around manager type stuff, mm -hmm. right? And she's still there because, you know, I'm a... I'm a a daddy's uh, a girl, however you want to say it, however yeah. that was named. So that kind of hit a special place for me. And man, I you know wish you more, man. Just keep on being, doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Keep power what you power, man. And um, did you have any handles, any social media stuff you want to shout out? Any pages? No, or? you know, um, no. And also, I forgot to tell you, I just we just started our own production company, Communal mm -hmm. Genius. Okay. Communal Genius. And we been. Sydney, me and Sydney, mm -hmm. and her boyfriend Lavelle. Sydney again. Yes, right, Sydney. Right. Yes, Sydney. Sydney. Again, right. You know, Sydney, my right arm, that's man. Right. You know, she she's taking care of me, but you know, that's that's pretty much it, man. Okay, that's powerful, man. And I want to just look in um, the camera, man. Just tell tell all the athletes, all the people, just in general, man. Us as black people, we got to stop hating on each other. We got to stop putting each other down. Um, Especially athletes, man. You know, we have we have some of the blacks across the country have some of the best athletes that ever put on tennis shoes, right? Mm -hmm. And you had guys who made it to the top of the line, colleges, uh, some overseas, some got free education, and people just say, man, we don't want to hear about you ain't make the league, you ain't make the NFL, and yeah. you got guys just sinking under getting on drugs, you know, just doing all type of stuff because they can't handle that disappointment to the people, right? And, man, um, I just think we need to stop that, man. We need to start encouraging more uplifting 
and when I look at uh, again other races, man, I see um, European guys, man. They didn't even they played the smaller schools. They didn't put none of the work in that some of these guys put in, man. And they they community embrace them, and they you know they doing well. So I'm just saying to our people, man, they just gotta come together, stop hating on each other, man, uplift, man. I think you gonna be a redemption story. You already living it, man. Appreciate you. A lot of people, appreciate man. you. I hope you the best, man. And appreciate good luck you, to you. I appreciate man. you. Thanks for coming, luck, man. Coming to this, man. With Thanks man. for having me. Yeah, definitely, appreciate man. you, bro. Okay, my man. Out the park, niggas know.